Yo YouTube, welcome back. It's What If Entertainment here, and I hope you're enjoying today. Today's What If will be what you see right now. Now, this is going to be a What If intro that I'll be using throughout most of my What Ifs, so I hope you guys go on to enjoy. I will see you guys later. Roll the intro. And I'm sitting in the hood, if a nigga want smoke, then you know where I'm at The clock got a switch, if a nigga act up, then he get the whole clip, then I feed him the Mac He tried to run, I was walking him down, ended up with about seven shots in his back My niggas like bullies and pits, if I tell him to go, then they're ready to go and attack So this is a re-recording -reco re of what if Naruto was All Might's reincarnation So, let's just get into it <clears throat> I forgot the close to this video I was watching So in his final battle with All for One, not in the Kamino War, but currently was going on in the manga, which I have not yet read, but will soon be getting into. Which is why I haven't done a Naruto or Deku What If. Because I do want to learn about his quirks. So yeah, that's, that's the whole reason why I haven't done that. But that's not the point. <clears throat> Naruto. Let's is, this is get into the What If. So, um, Toshinori he, um, would fight All for One. And All for One had had enough. He got in his way way too many times, so he decides to kill him. It's really much nothing less to say. All Might is encompassed by darkness, only to be hid by a bright light. When he comes to, he realized that he had been reborn or reincarnated, as he heard about this in multiple cultures. He never knew it was real, but now he guess he had it. He had an idea, but he when he heard about these in some of these cultures, they were more than likely supposed to reincarnate as animals. So this confused him a bit. All for one watched as a masked man attacked his father, oh, his father, his father and his mother. It took him hostage and almost tried to kill him only for his father to rescue him. And the next time he see his father would be when he was summoned back, summoned to him in order to have some sort of creature sealed within him. Taking in the, um, the um nine tails and the last words of well taking in the last words of his mother and mother did bring sort of bring him to tears to hear that this life would be a bit harder and now because he would be something called a Jinchuriki to this to this beast over time after his parents last words he would be taken in by heroes and it would be raised by him until four years old but actually be at the age of four that he would awaken his quirk one for all and all might was quite happy but he knew he needed a rebrand. He was no longer All Might, so he didn't really feel the whole Smash thing. Even though he will use those attacks, he wanted something to call for Naruto to call his own, which is what he is, who he is now. So over time, he begins training his quirk. He takes number one in presidents and using um, in the academy. He's basically the number one student, reduced to being having the intelligence of All Might's past life while being in a future version of all world. Yes, I believe the era of quirks takes like takes place like two to three hundred years into into the future, or four two yeah two three or four hundred years into the future. I'm not sure. Even though the, the technology does seem a bit basic, yet at times seems really highly advanced. That's not the point. Over time, All Might um, doesn't befriend anyone, really. Besides, well, he befriends four people, actually. It's going to be Shikamaru Nara, Kiba Inuzuka, Choji Akamichi, and Shino Aburame. They seem to be the... Well, Shino was, was more or less the quiet type, but he seemed to always have, like, not as much of a darker aura. And it's not like he's dark. It's more like Shino is quiet. He's but he does seem to have like a brighter aura around him when hanging out with the four with the other with his three friends. So well four friends, yeah, that's four. I'm so stupid. Anyways. Over time, Toshinori eventually would take the graduation exams. Now this is where everything changes. During the time of seeing Naruto awaken his power, he was in new Naruto would need as much training and knew that the Shinobi program would not prepare the students for the Shinobi world as well as he once hoped they would. So he would actually push the Shinobi graduation age from 12 to 4, 16. So Naruto would actually take it a lot earlier than normal. And when he failed it because of the clone technique, Mizuki approached him because he saw Naruto as vulnerable. Now here is where it continues to stay as canon for now. So while Naruto is training, um, it gets this um is confronted by Mizuki after failing. Toshinori does see some <clears throat> does see some inconsistencies in the story. It can even sort of sense malice in it. 
he doesn't really know where this came from. He can always sort of still feel negative emotions come from, coming to after him. He didn't really know. He didn't even know what it was and never trained it, really. And over uh, so when he was heading to the Hokage's office, as he was going there, he was actually writing a note to the Hokage that he left on his desk. He used the jutsu, the jutsu he used to keep the villagers, the male villagers away from him when they tried to attack him because, you know, he knows he's the nine touch in Turkey. Away, the sexy jutsu to knock Hiruzen out. Over time, he would, well, not over time, in time, he would take these um, scroll of seals and would head out to the training area where he would actually learn the Shadow Clone and the Multi Shadow Clone variant. And after that, hours of training it to as best as he could, he could, um, Iruka would eventually arrive and would yell it before Naruto, Toshinori would reveal what Mizuki has said. Before saying that he knew Mizuki, he it, it, it had a 50 50 chance of Mizuki being lying to him. As Mizuki would say, so, you knew Naruto. Naruto said, yeah, that's why I told the Hokage, I left the Hokage a letter. I'm pretty sure he knows too. Mizuki's eyes widen because now he definitely knows he's not getting out of the village. If the Hokage knows he has it, he's not getting out. So he goes to take that that weird drug Orochimaru left in that um sort of uh that shed um to sort of help help his chances of getting out of Konoha as he begins body begins to morph into I think it was that of a tiger. But Naruto or Toshinori using one for all would actually use Texas Smash to send Mizuki cradling through um <clears throat> through the woods. But this Texas Smash had a bit more to it. You see, instead of letting the air pressure carry him, carry do most of the hitting, he actually landed that decisive blow, which is a lot stronger than, which would actually improve the end. The air pressure carried him after the initial blow. So it was kind of like getting hit twice, yet not at the same time. So we're going to call it the one and a half hit. So he would hit him, you know, like I said, one and a half times and would send Mizuki flying. But that, that punch broke Mizuki's ribs and actually caused them to pierce his lungs and want to even go through his heart. So after this, Mizuki slowly, due to the draining of his life force, he would slowly begin to age, as is shown in Shippuden when he took the drug. He did begin to age. So once aging, he would eventually turn into that of an old man uh, before dying. Now, Naruto was a bit traumatized. Toshinori had, yes, he'd kill people, but in this new world, he had been, he's now essence a 12 year old kid and he never wanted to kill but he knew that the shinobi world was not forgiving of those who are shinobi and weren't going to be killers he knew he would eventually have to kill someone so yuruka would comfort him and even give him his own headband before the hokage would um they would head to the hokage's office where hokage Hiruzen would tell naruto about a student of his before saying summoning a giant well not a giant a mini slug to send a letter when the slug would come back with a response on where to meet, he was going to give it to Naruto before telling Naruto he has a week to reach there. Before telling him to prepare himself because the student seems to have a super strength, super strength like him, but not the same thing like he does. She uses chakra and she can train him best in the controlling of his abilities and even taking him his training even further. He could even learn medical ninjutsu while there. This year's and also gives Naruto a scroll. The scroll contains the information on the Shadow Clone Jutsu and the benefits of it. More or less the benefits, actually, over everything else. It's really just based the basic information, what the Shadow Clone Jutsu does. So, within the next day or so, Naruto will leave Konoha and would not be seen for the next four years. Naruto will return eventually after leaving Tsunade. At, thanks to her training, Toshinori had actually discovered a power that young Midori had used. When mixing both his chakra and one for all into one, like one cohesive unit at whenever he's using it, he actually, um, in sort of a way, develop his own full cowling. So this is how chakra is constantly being, you know, rotated and flowing throughout his entire body all the time. When he mixes one for all with his ch with any chakra, um, with any chakra, it seeps into his chakra network and begins rotating, in essence, creating a full cowling variant. And it does produce yellow lightning rather than Midoriya's green because it's in its own right. His color one for all was yellow. So when Toshinori would arrive back in Konoha, he'd be quite taller, a lot more muscular. I mean, again, this is Toshinori Yagi, so pretty much picture a young Toshinori. 
pre date meeting David or going to um like pre meeting David too. Not that Toshinori, more of a UA sort of Toshinori. Picture that one, the one that you see in the um, thumbnail. Now his clothing consists of somewhat of what's in the thumbnail. He wear um essentially a black version of the UA shirt. It has the UA on it. He still wants to pay homage to the school that taught him so much. So he does have a UA symbol. And on the back of it, it does have a Konoha symbol. Like dead in the center has a Konoha symbol with black combat pants and black boots. That's what he wears. And with his headband, he actually has it tied down to um, Sigma Tashikomaru on his bicep. And since the headband is quite large, he can actually tie it around his bicep and it won't fall off. So when he comes back to Konoha, Hiruzen is quite happy. Naruto did hide himself, so it was a bit confusing from the villagers. He was followed by a bunch of shinobi until they watched him enter the Hokage's tower. Anbu told Hiruzen what was happening, but Hiruzen sort of suspected of who it was because of the sort of size of the frame of the person. Now, Toshinori is actually taller than his classmates. My majority of his classmates stand at ice because I believe young, young Naruto was standing at what? Original Naruto was standing at about four foot ten, um, at t- age twelve. Toshinori was standing at a good five, three, five, four, and um, Shippuden Naruto stands at oh, um, stands at apparently five foot five. So when Naruto comes back, he actually stands taller than even that at a good six foot four. Yes, Naruto is six four. Surprising, but I mean, All Might is seven foot. What do you expect? Come on. And I believe he's seven foot in both forms, if I'm not mistaken, but I could be wrong. You know, I could be wrong. So when he hears him, will be quite surprised to know that Naruto is actually a lot taller than everyone else. But Toshinori knew it was because he was like this when he was this age. He was taller than everyone else. Not really necessarily he was this tall, but it seems that his his growth cycles are different. So he probably by the time he's maybe an adult, he'd already be at his full height rather than continuing growing at um as he continues to get older. Toshinori would talk to Hiruzen as Hiruzen tells Naruto that his classmates are graduating in the up and coming week. And he wants Naruto to be in the class or to at least be watching them over time to at least get to see how they far they've grown since he's last seen them. So Toshinori does, hears and gives him an, um, a mask, which Toshinori actually reminds, which actually is a mask Toshinori had designed in a book, which was a sort of a All Might, like, buffed up All Might, older All Might sort of face, except it didn't have the, you know, bangs like Naruto did. So Naruto would place the mask on and put his cloak up, or Toshinori would do so, and over the week would watch the rookie nine and the rest of the class and the rest of his old classmates all um continue uh, preparing and their preparations up to the um what was it again the graduation so when everyone takes the graduation exam and graduates naruto already know um toshinori um was told of his teammates so when he comes the next day after graduation he is placed on a team with sasuke Chia, which he doesn't agree with because he senses darkness in Sasuke. And knows that Sasuke, if Sas- Sasuke hates people who more or less, more, or less are more powerful than him. He's seen that because there were a bunch of kids bragging to Sasuke about being stronger than him. And even those who were like a beat, like at least like a year older, when they were comparing so, um, the rookie of the year, Neji, to him, saying that Neji was probably the far superior ninja. He saw Sasuke, you know, sort of felt Sasuke's emotions being filled with negativity, anger, toward, and rage towards whoever Neji was. Now, that's not the point. The point from here is now Sasuke, uh, he knows that Sasuke, if he, Sasuke sees him using his power, Sasuke would do whatever it takes if not take that power from him would go some would go wherever it take go whoever would offer him power to become stronger and that's where he's a bit concerned but that's not the point we move on to the um once they all meet up and Sasuke and Sakura find out that they are on a teammate with Naruto who no one's seen in the villa for over four years and a lot of the People are an outrage because why was Naruto there? Naruto was supposed to have been kicked out of the Shinobi program, which I'll get into when I later on. 
So Naruto comes and they um Naruto enters um removing his mask and taking off his cloak to reveal the outfit I really described earlier. And well, let's just say they don't give the friendliest of greetings. A lot of people are angry that Naruto seemingly passed somehow, even though he was supposed to be kicked from the Shinobi program. But that's not really the top that's really a main reason. And the fact that he was out for some reason, and more than likely being trained by someone for those four years. So Naruto comes, he sits down with his teammates, and they wait three hours for Kakashi to arrive. When they arrive, um, he arrives to go to the rooftops, and they, well, more or less, just, um, they give introductions. Um, I introduce himself as Naruto Uzumaki. He has relatively the same goals, except he says he wants to be a symbol of peace, for the entirety of the shinobi nation. Well, the entire, all shinobi. He wants to bring peace to every single country if he can. Nkashi will say it's an admirable goal and he does still have his goal of being Hokage. He even knows who his parents are. <clears throat> now, he isn't does yet, not yet. No, no, Naruto knows he's the Naruto Shinturiki. Yes, that's why I didn't say nothing about that in the Mizuki, um, in the whole incident with Mizuki. So, Yes, um, but Kakashi would tell them to come tomorrow to a to training round. I believe it was seven to do a survival test before telling them not to eat. They all nod, but Toshinori knows that eating is a um, important part of your day, so he eats. And when he arrives at the place, he notices that Kakashi's late again, and he says, "Huh, probably want to be just as late as he was yesterday." and Decides to leave and would come back three hours later than normal. Wanted to see Kakashi just stroll in after him. Kakashi would intro um, give the uh, not introductions would uh, tell them about the bell test before telling them to go as these timer starts. Toshinori would walk out would um would jump into the forest, using one for all to suppress his own chakra as the presence of one for all is a bit higher. Well, as he's sort of overtaking chakra at the moment, so Kakashi can't really sense it. Too much. He can He can sort of sense Naruto, but not too much. So he thinks Naruto's stealth skills have improved since he was a child. And over time, Kika, um, Naruto uh, or Toshinori would watch as Naruto, as Sasuke and Sakura. Well, Sakura is defeated by Genjutsu, but Sasuke take off take on Kakashi, which is relatively the same as his Genin, as twelve year old Genin getting Sasuke. So when um, Naruto steps in. Sasuke is actually in prime view to watch. Naruto, um, Toshinori using one for all, does place a bunch of wall place punches due to the speed increase. So he actually, and again, and I didn't ever go over this due to me trying to at least get the what if down to maybe two hours long. I'm going over it into it briefly soon. But yeah, Naruto would have, thanks to the speed increase, Due to one for all and being able to use it at hundred percent every single time, Naruto would able to be actually be able to keep up with Kakashi in a sense and place well placed punches. Now, <clears throat> does he retrieve a bell? No, but Toshinori would would know how to retrieve the bell. So, um, when um they don't get the bells by the time the timer rings, Toshinori. Kakashi decides to tie Naruto to the pole anyway, even though Sasuke was the one who attacked first. And Toshinori decides to feed Sasuke, even though if Sakura was going to feed him anyway. Kakashi didn't know that, but, you know, so when he comes out, he does pass them. And they go and take d rank missions for the next four months. Or no, is it five months? No, 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 it's, it's about four months and three weeks, so... Almost close to a five month mark. And during that time, Naruto or Toshinori had been fed up. Now, this is where I'm going to explain to you the whole situation with me boosting one for all. Now, the top tiers in Naruto are extremely powerful, and let's be honest, all of my couldn't take on the very top tiers, which is why I gave him a boost due to Chakra. Chakra in his initial state boosted one for all to an immense level. And now with the QB when he got the QB chakra sealed within him, the QB seal within him, it boosted it even further. So one for all that it actually does make him a lot stronger than canon 
than what All Might could ever hope to be in the My Hero verse. So this is like a my a Naruto verse version of one of one for all and All Might. Oh, my Naruto verse um verse of All Might. That's what it is. That's what this version is. So picture that. That's why I'm saying that. <clears throat> so yeah, you get what I'm saying. So when um Naruto complains about the mission, they get a mission to the land of waves where Hikashi. Um, um, they meet a, they have this quarter bridge builder. I don't know why it's a Kakashi, but because I'm trying to get everything crunched down in time, it's more or less messing with my schedule. So, yeah. Anyways, Naruto, I'm in, um, actually, Tizuna would actually compliment Naruto over everyone else, saying Sasuke is an Ima, and Sakura is, ask Sakura if, if Sakura isn't, even is a ninja. He does call Kakashi a Cyclops, but sees Naruto. Naruto does have muscles, and they show. So doesn't actually is impressed by Naruto, saying that he must be the strongest one on the team, and wonders if Naruto is the sensei. Naruto smiles, even though Tazuna knows he's a bit young, but Naruto is saying no, as he points to Kakashi. Tazuna, a bit let down, that this strong kid apparently wasn't the sensei. Kakashi, <laughs> I'm going to say a bit, man, but gets over it. They eventually... Embark from Konoha the next day, and on their em- um and on their way to Wave, they come across a mysterious looking puddle. Now Toshinori immediately knew what was happening, so before they reached the puddle, he would um his everyone watches Naruto's bangs spiked up before st- he stumped his foot into the ground, causing the entire earth in front of them to essentially come up. So it's, 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 you know how Toph, when she taps her foot to the ground, multiple different um, platforms of rock come out, come up out of the ground. It's similar to that, except it's a lot more destructive due to the due to how he used it. I'm just saying he's basically caused the road in front of him to implode. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't know why I didn't just say that, but yeah. That was the best. That's, that's as much as as far as I can remember. That was the best rep- representation of what I was trying to say. It was tough, but anyways, um, the demon brothers would be thrown out of their genjutsu or their ninjutsu. I forgot what it was, and Kakashi would immediately throw a shuriken or no a kunai and a shuriken at their um chain to link them to a tree that had been farther away. As Naruto jumped over it before delivering two punches to it. To the two of them. It was a um, Detroit smash. Also, actually, they caused them to go even further through the woods, causing their chain to snap as they get caught on a tree. But they're going so fast that they snapped and they're constantly being hit by a tree and crashing through trees and trees more over time until they eventually slow down, unconscious. Because she would eventually wait for them to wake up and would um, interrogate them to learn that they were hired by a man named Gato. Said that they were working with another ninja named Zabuza Momochi. Momochi. The, the demon of the hidden mist. We all know who Zabuza is. <clears throat> so, once... Sorry. So, once finding out this, Kakashi would question Tazen on the truth. And Tazen would reveal that Gato was sort of... Had a wave in a chokehold. And his bridge would free them from said chokehold. So he needed, he had to lie because Wave was too poor for them to, in essence, get a higher ranked mission. Now, Kakashi would ask his team, but Naruto says he already knows his goal, which is to bring peace within every nation that he can, wherever he can, to become a symbol of peace. That's what he wants. Kakashi knows Naruto has a vote already is going to go with, whether or not the rest of the team goes, as his question. Kakashi would see as Sasuke would agree, and Sakura reluctantly would agree only because Sasuke did. And they would continue their embrace to wave. But Naruto would actually have to throw them over the sort of land explosion crater thing that he caused. So, yeah. But they would, and he would have to take Tazuna because Tazuna can't really survive being thrown like that. Because, you know, he's a civilian. They would eventually make their way to a boat. And from the land of fire that would take them to wave country. And once arriving there, Kakashi would notice the increase in 
mist. That seems to be unnatural from the sea because as you get further into wave, it should thin out at least a bit more, but it seems to be getting a bit thicker as they continue. It wouldn't be until Naruto was throw, spotted throw a kunai into a bush as he spotted something to reveal a white rabbit that could cause you to realize that it was a sum, um, not a summon, a substitution animal. And would tell them to duck as he hears a whizzing noise. But surprising to everyone, Naruto caught the blade in midair. And, in, and using one for all with a swing, he would swing it at the direction of which the blade had come from. Sending a figure flying throughout the entirety, well, out of the sort of forest area he was in. And along with clearing the mist of where they were. As the man landed, he would go through hand signs before saying, Hit and miss Jutsu. As Kakashi would tell them to get behind him, but Naruto would tell him he has this. As he runs in, Naruto um, had dropped the blade. Not to be noticed to him, a clone had appeared and grabbed the blade and threw him at Zabuza. So when, by the time Naruto would reach him, Zabuza would already have the executioner's blade back in his hand. It would be swinging it at Naruto, only for Naruto to catch it with like literally one hand to stop it really, stop the swing before delivering a devastating punch to Zabuza. Now this is not actually a one for all enhanced, um, I'm not sure if I said one for all enhanced punch earlier, but this is actually a chakra enhanced punch due to his training with Tsunade. He was actually able to sort of mimic his one for all strength with this in a way. So. Toshinori had sent Zabuza back, breaking a bunch of bones in his uh, in his face, and so almost would have broke his neck. Zabuza holding his face, <laughs> damn brat, you broke my jaw. As Naruto says, I broke a lot more bones than your jaw. As Naruto appears in front of um, Zabuza, enhancing his speed with Chakra, before break hitting, give, delivering a punch that would break. Literally Zabuza's arm, and Zabuza had hoped to block the punch. Zabuza's arm it was done for. Zabuza was so confused. How was this kid so strong? Yeah, he was 16, from what he could tell, or a bit older. But God, this, how could he be so strong? He was really confused on this. Naruto would then tell him to take this. But Zabuza would not let Naruto do so, so he latches himself on to Naruto. Naruto stopping the attack smir smiles or smirks before saying that was a bad idea, before grabbing Zabuza and holding him in place, before spinning really fast. As he says, Oklahoma smash! Now, they ain't never heard of Oklahoma, but like, what, the f what is that? As Naruto eventually lets go of Zabuza as he stops spinning, throwing him through many trees. Zabuza is standing, sitting, laying there in a heap. As Naruto goes to him with a kunai in hand, only for three Sinbon to pierce Zabuza's neck. And a hunter in to tell Naruto thank you, but he'll take things from here before disappearing with Zabuza's body. As Naruto goes back to Kakashi, Kakashi tells Naruto that was a good job, but very reckless. To not at least tell him that he was going to do something so that he could stop him. But he might have let him fight if he told him a lot sooner. Naruto tells the sensei that he's sorry. As they continue their way on to Wave. Now, while in Wave, um, Naruto and Inari would not have the best of ways of getting along. And he would actually not be training with Kaka um, with Sakura and Sasuke on tree climbing nor water walking. Because he knows those things already. Thanks to training with Tsunade. But what he would do is Kakashi would teach Naruto a bunch of jutsus that are key towards his elemental affinities, which is wind and fire. That's why I'm going to give Naruto the two basic affinities of wind and fire. So he would teach him a like at least three um, fire. Well, I want to have him before fire and jutsu and two wind and jutsu. He doesn't have much. And then the wind and jutsu is the great breakthrough and wind, wind style air bullets. That's really what it is. And I'll think of four ninjutsu. I'll just look through the Naruto fandom for a four fire ninjutsu. If I can't really think of any. So as they continue their way into um, while in wave, Naruto 
Um, and um, Inari does continue to get into argument due to Inari complaining about his life. It wouldn't be until one last time that Naruto had had enough of it. And Naruto would have enough of Inari that he would go out into the forest one night and would actually expend himself so much. No, uh, because Fu Kaling does tend to take on both his chakra reserves along with his stamina. So he does pass out eventually and wakes up by Butu Haku trying to wake him up. Naruto and Haku have a talk about precious people. And Naruto does agree that it's a great way to grow strong. And he even tells Haku of his dreams would be a sort of symbol of peace to every nation or to all shinobi out there. To create a sort of peaceful land for shinobi and civilians to live, to live freely. Haku says it's an admirable goal. And she agrees that a place like that would be quite nice for people like civilians and shinobi especially. As Naruto eventually makes his way back to the... Um, to the house, Naruto does oversleep because he's still a bit exhausted. So he oversleeps the next day, and a week has passed at this point. So Naruto does um, eventually oversleep and will wake up only to hear loud noises coming from downstairs. He gets dressed immediately and um, jumps out of the window only to, to look out of the window only to see two men taking tsunami. Jumping from out of the window down behind the two men, he tells her not to fear. Why? Because I am here. That's exactly what he says. He, he still says that. And he's going to say it again. So, Naruto would, or Toshinori, would throw two devastating punches into the back of the men. And the punches were so powerful that they actually snapped their spines in half. And send and sort of par literally paralyze them, sending them back, sending them into the river, as paralyzed, not gonna be able to move much. Yeah, they they're not gonna make it through that river. As Naruto would tell Inari, it's a good job he did protecting his mother before saying he has to go because if they're here, that means that they're attacking the bridge. Before getting into a jumping stance, before jumping directly towards where the bridge is, when he lands, he. He jumps through Haku's ice dome, which surprises everyone. Mostly um, this is Haku and Sasuke, and Sasuke could never damage these these ice nerves. As Naruto says, not to fear, how loud enough for everyone to hear, again, like I said, he will say it again, because I am here. Before giving a All Might-esque smile, an even wider one than normal. As Haku goes to throw Simbon, Simbon at him, only for Naruto to catch them out of midair, before they dropping him to the ground. As Haku tries to transport the mirrors, Naruto would bat Haku through a, literally through it. He wouldn't be, because of the speed of which he was hit and the power behind it, he wouldn't be able to enter his own mirror. He'd be sent mirror, he'd be sent through it. I said mirror. His mirror, he'd be sent through it. Causing Haku to sort of tumble and roll around the ground until he eventually comes to a stop before taking off rushing back towards Naruto and telling him that this is another jutsu that he'd be working on in secret as he go ice release, ice dragon jutsu. I know, ice dragon bliss is what I'm going to call it. I like that name. As an ice dragon at impeccable speeds will begin rushing towards Naruto. But surprisingly to Haku and everyone else, Naruto was while still running, was essentially had his fist out and it was going clean through the ice dragon, destroying it. Until Naruto eventually reached Haku before grabbing Haku's arm and lifting him over his shoulder before slamming him down into the ground. As Haku you know, do that noise, that grunt noise that you know what I'm saying? His wind was literally knocked out of him. Only for him to literally pass out. Now, Naruto Sasuke wouldn't be taken out due to this and actually wouldn't awaken a Sharingan at this moment. It wouldn't be until later that I'm going to give Sasuke a Sharingan. But for now, yes. So, seeing Haku taken out, Zabuza begins to work even harder because he knows that he now has to face this brat. As Kakashi holds him down, Naruto tells Kakashi that it's not, there's no need for him to, um, knock, um, to kill Zabuza. 
using the Missouri Smash to knock Sabuza out instead. So, um, now that Sabuza is knocked out, they and everyone, the people on the mist begins to clear, revealing that of Gato and his man as Gato is clapping, telling the Konoha Shinobi that he was thankful that they killed, as far as he knows, killed Zabuza and Haku, but now they had to die. He even tells them that he didn't even plan on just on even um, teaching, on even paying Zabuza and Haku before kicking Haku. And Naruto, he had learned that this was Haku, um, would literally be quite angered. And who had learned that it was Haku would be very angered by Gato and his words. So, he would do as he would run towards them, charging up an attack in his hand. As yellow lightning begins to emit around him, and Kakashi's like, wait a minute, I've seen yellow lightning like this. Oh, Lord, don't, does he know that? How could he know that jutsu? But surprising, that's not what Naruto is doing. Naruto had through the punch, a downwards punch, after now yelling, Detroit smash. The pressure from that punch sent all of Gato's men through the, um, literally through the, um, through the rails and out into the sea. And since there are sharks in the sea, you know, his men don't make it. And neither does Gato. As Gato's thrown into his boat. And the bridge is very high up compared to where his boat is. He's not surviving that landing. Even if he's going through the boat. He would have the moment he body made contact with any portion of the boat, which he is landing cat first, he was dead. Not surviving. So um, Tazana and his workers who would appear again would begin clapping for Naruto, thanking him immensely. Sasuke be like, I helped a bit, but would thank Naruto for saving him, saying even admitting that he wouldn't admitting that he would not be able to get out of the mirrors without Naruto's help. And over time, they complete the bridge, especially with Naruto now helping even more. Even uses Shadow Clone Jutsu to help. And three weeks later. The bridge is done and Team 7 is heading back to Kona. And on their way back, the people of um away decide to name the bridge the Great Naruto Bridge. Now I was gonna do some sort of symbol bridge like the Great Peace Bridge or something like that, but I decided to keep it simple with the Great Naruto Bridge, keep it the same. So yeah. You guys would be like, yeah, that's pretty much what happened at at Wave. As Hirozin would say, hmm. I'll make sure to send um a sort of notice to wave to pay the extra fine for the on uh, the extra money for the mission but for now good job team seven You're dismissed and they get a week off and the next week kakashi gives them these letters or these sort of um these papers for the tuning exam and naruto's quite happy and this would actually be after the whole incident with konohamura Conqueror, which to be fair does not go the same Seeing as how Naruto could sense negative emotions, he actually noticed Gara first before everyone else. He, he like as soon as he turned that corner, he was just wafted by Gara's negative emotions. So he did tell Gara to come out before Sasuke would even make his appearance, shocking Konkuro, causing him to drop Konohamaru and Konohamaru to run towards Naruto. Before thanking him and calling him boss, which surprised Naruto. Why did this kid call him boss? But oh well, it was their first time meeting. And Conqueror, uh, well, actually, I'm actually going to be having it be, um, hey, not the first time meeting. They were meet before, and that's why. Anyways, that's not the point. Naruto now would go, um, after the whole incident, would tell Conqueror that that was the third Hokage's grandson. And he wouldn't very much appreciate, he would appreciate it if he'd keep his hands off of anybody within Konoha, just from Konoha or from other nations visiting, as he does know of the tuning exams. He paid attention. Let's be honest. All Might would pay attention in class. So, and that that's over with, Team 7 would be tested individually, except Naruto. As Iruka knew, Naruto had received special training from Asani during his time. And, well, he wouldn't test Naruto. Unlike Sasuke and Sakura, he would test the two of them. And after the test, they would eventually make their, um, on, I think it was on like a Friday or something. And they would make their way, anyways, a be time skips to them making their way to the tuning exams. Now this relatively stays the same as Ken and Sasuke still gets defeated by a much older, much stronger Rock Lee. And the whole interaction with um the with Aizumon Kotetsu does happen with them and the Genjutsu, all that. They eventually make their way to the um testing area. And I'm really not gonna go over this. Like 
it's relatively the same except Naruto is a lot stronger. And it's not actually on official record of what Naruto was doing for those four years. So Kabuto doesn't have information on that. So it's relatively the same. Now we see um, Naruto. After, I'm not going to go over the, again, like I stated, I'm not going to go over the um, first exam portion. So I'm going to go straight into the second. After getting their permission slip signed, everything, getting their scroll, Naruto and Team 7 would head within. But Naruto knew Sasuke and Sakura would never trust him with the scroll. Sakura liked Sasuke too much and would agree with whatever he said. So Naruto swiped the scroll from Sasuke before he could ever, so as before Sasuke even knew that Naruto took it. Thinking that it's still in his pocket as he placed the false scroll within. So when Naruto is blasted away by a giant wind blast and Sasuke tries to give up the false scroll, Naruto is confused. Sasuke is confused and angered. What happened to the scroll? Has this um has this ninja already taken the scroll? If so, why is it after him? If they if already has their scroll. It wouldn't be until Naruto would come back to see Sasuke trying to hand over a false scroll that Naruto would be angered. Toshinori will say so knew Sasuke shouldn't be like this. So what he would do the sensible thing. He would punch Sasuke oh in the face. No enhancements, no one for all enhancements, just pure physical strength, which is a lot, and to be honest. So um, while doing this, while he did send Naruto on uh, Sasuke, send Sasuke to the, he would yell at him for doing so. Before telling Sasuke that if he doesn't plan to fight, he'll just fight him himself. Before yellow lightning begins to spark all around Naruto. As Orochimaru says, does he know that Jutsu? There's no way. As Naruto's bangs begin to spike up. As Naruto um, rushes towards Orochimaru at inhumane speeds. Punch, well, and ninja main speeds is what it really should be, but in shinobi speeds, whatever. Um, as he'd hit Orochimaru, he'd send him flying farther back. As he continued running after the Orochimaru, he would use a shadow clone that would, his essence, um, toss him with an, its enhanced strength towards Orochimaru. As Toshinori appears right next to Orochimaru, he was spinning in the air before delivering a devastating kick to Orochimaru's midsection, sending him down into the ground, leaving a crater where he once landed. Where he landed, and due to him kicking Orochimaru, he sort of um stayed above the area which Orochimaru was and fell to the ground, um hitting Orochimaru, landing on Orochimaru's chest, causing even greater the crater to expand even further. As Naruto would then jump back before going through hand signs, fire or well, Toshinori would jump back before going through hand signs, fire style, fireball jutsu. As he would use the attack to is he would use it to burn Orochimaru or the person who um he doesn't know it's Orochimaru, but he would do it to attack the person. Naruto would then because Naruto thought the snake that attacked him. Toshinori does think no, the snake is a summon, but he thinks that the reason why the snakes in this place are so large is because they're all summons. Even though he's Hazard of Orochimaru from Tsunade. And history class. Anyways, Naruto would go on, and Orochimaru would um, Naruto would go on to jump back as a large explosion had come from Orochimaru's body, only for someone to appear behind Naruto. Glowing fingers as he needed to take Naruto out of the snow. Uchimaru uses the five element seal on Naruto in hopes of cutting, in hopes of messing it up because he thinks that this is the Kyuubi's chakra Naruto is using to enhance itself in the way that Tsunade does. So he does so in hopes of cutting it off, but it only doubly does is really mess with his chakra. And now it does sort of take one for all down a bit, so I'm going to have him be at about half strength. It just as he was half with half chakra when he had the seal on in canon, I believe. He's around half to heavy this half to a fourth percent in chakra that he had access to. As not due to the like sudden decrease in chakra he has access to, Naruto would actually pass out as Orochimaru kicks him him away, sending him through multiple trees. He brands Sasuke with the mark as that commotion had to cause some attention and leaves. 
Sasuke falls to the ground as Sakura catches him. He's a bit stronger, but not as strong as... But he's just only a bit stronger than Iron Genin himself. Or a Canon Genin himself. It's again, the Sakura has not yet gone under her training with Tsunade. So, yeah. Anyways, Naruto. Now, she would be able to... She would have to leave Naruto behind for now as he come back for him and drag him to the same tree where she'd have Sasuke at. And um, Naruto would recover a lot sooner than Sasuke. So in this time, when uh, well, a bit sooner. So when Sasuke, or actually a bit after Sasuke, rather than a bit sooner. I'm going to have to have him um, recuperate. So as the events go happen outside, and Sasuke wakes up and attacks the sound man, Naruto will wake up, seeing Sasuke about to break his arms, for seemingly what he can see is no reason. Everybody seemed horrified, even Sakura. Naruto, with a one for all enhanced hit to Sasuke's head, would knock the boy unconscious. As the markings around his body recede, as Naruto looks at Dosu, um, at not Dosu, but Zaku, before grabbing him and delivering a devastating punch to Zaku, before telling Dosu that the next punch goes through Dosu through Zaku's gut. Now hand over your scroll. As he do so, those who actually hands over two scrolls because at the end they never lost the other scroll because why? Naruto had it, and no one knew that. So those who hands over the scroll take Saku and Ken with him, and they leave. Naruto gives the scroll to Shikamaru's team, well, actually to Rock Lee for helping him. And Rock Lee thanks Naruto as Naruto and Team Seven head to the tower where they meet up with Kabuto. And it wouldn't be until they reached it that Kabuto would go to meet up with his own team. And once there, Toshinori would unravel the scrolls before throwing them away to reveal Iruka Sensei. And Iruka would take them inside. Now, within the tower, they will all rest for the exams. And they have like about an, I say give them a, I'll give them a day. So they have a day from normal time to the preliminaries. Well, well we know it's the preliminaries. So when everyone comes, um, the Hokage gives a speech about the Will of Fire and why the tuning exams were um start why the tuning exams were started. And in doing so, um Haite would take over explaining the rules and also explaining that you this is no longer a team effort and you could give up without affecting your team, which causes Kabuto to give up at at this moment. Naruto finds it a bit suspicious as why would Kabuto do so? And he can also, again, with those negative emotions, he can sense Kabuto's along with a bit of his chakra. A bit, just a bit. Even though it's like a small portion of his ne normal negative emotions sensing because it's been sealed off again, like I said. It's just a small portion of it. But he can still sense the malice coming from Kabuto constantly. Even when he smiles, he knows that Kabuto is um has some sort of malice that seemingly is not right. So Naruto would watch Kabuto left, narrowing his eyes. He's using caught Naruto looking at him and narrowing his eyes at Kabuto and would look at him. He's known about Naruto's ability to sort of sense negative emotions. And seeing as how Naruto is um narrowing his eyes at Kabuto means Kabuto has a bunch of negative emotions. In order for it to make Naruto narrow his eyes at him like that. So he signals an Anbu to watch over Kabuto. The Anbu doesn't. Kabuto doesn't know the Anbu is watching him. So for now, yeah. As they start the preliminaries. Now, relatively, everything goes the same. Everyone's a stronger, but it's still the same. Because they're all stronger. Like, like I said. So, with him now being stronger than normal, Naruto would, um, uh, Yeah. Um, Naruto would eventually get a match against Kiba. Now, Kiba and Nakamaru went in the Man Beast transformation would actually land two decisive bites against Naruto. It was the only way they could hope of hoping and hope of holding him down enough for Kiba to deliver uh Akamaru in hopes for Kiba to deliver a strike to him. But Naruto would grab Akamaru before using I believe I said it was the Oklahoma Smash that does that. That where he spins and throws his um he spins his opponents off of him. He would do so, but would guide Akamaru towards Kiba, hitting him out of mid-air and causing, well, well, well seeing, seeing how Kiba is using the Getsuga or the Fang, uh, he would um, 
I believe it's it's the one person version of the Fango Bang. I'm not sure what it was called. I think it's Suga. I think that's what it's called. And um and he would throw Akamaru at it, which would be harder than normal. So Kiva would bump it to Akamaru. Um, Akamaru's uh, hit hitting him would cause pain to Akamaru, causing him to be transformed. But it would also cause Kiba to be sent flying into the wall where he craters, making Naruto the winner. And from here, relatively the same with the whole Neji versus Hinata thing. All that's relatively the same. So, for now, um, they do have a um, their their um, Genin outfits on. It's just an, like a lar- larger version of their Genin outfits, except for Naruto. So Sakura's still wearing that stupid dress that she normally wears. Even though she's a lot older. Anyways, Naruto would um Naruto would go on and would learn that he was getting Edgy as an opponent. And when he would go to Kakashi for training, Kakashi would tell Naruto, look, Naruto, we both know that you're very we're ready to take B and Chuni. But Sasuke needs to train more because he's taking on that guard kid. Naruto denies before Kakashi says he has another training for him. And when he reveals Ebisu to, to Naruto still having that same meeting, when Konohama was a lot younger again. He was younger, so this was around the same time as normal. He did meet Ebi, uh, Konohama at that time, except it wasn't to take his ninja registration. It was to talk about the whole leaving Konoha thing. So he did teach Konohama the sexy jutsu when he left. So yeah, I did. Write, I think I said that I was gonna have him still meet Konohama around the same time. If not, now I'm stating it. So Naruto would train with Ebisu as Ebisu begins trying to teach Naruto chakra control until Ebisu spots a peeker. It was Jiraiya. Now Jiraiya would dispatch of Ebisu quite quickly, and due to that, Naruto would ask him to train him as a replacement. Eventually, Jiraiya would agree after Naruto uses the sexy jutsu, along with following him for so long that Jiraiya would begin teaching Naruto, picking up with every single left off with the water walking. Boy, when Naruto begins talking about how his control has been messed up since his train, since that weird um, snake guy hit him in the stomach with that um, with his glowing hands, it's been his ch- control has been all over the place. As Jiraiya ex- asks Naruto explain it, and when Naruto explains it. Jiraiya places his hand behind his back. Naruto narrows his eyes a bit. As Jiraiya tells him to place, uh, to put his hands up in the air, as Naruto does so, his shirt lifts up a bit. As Jiraiya used the five elements, uh, five elements unsealing technique, um, sending his gut in, uh, his hand into Naruto's gut, but it doesn't hurt as much. It hurts Jiraiya a bit more. It hurts Jiraiya actually a bit. As Jiraiya undoes the seal, as Naruto feels half of his chakra, that half of chakra that's been missing from him, along with his control in the Kyubi, Kyubi's chakra that he knows is within him, he feels it come back. As Naruto gets down the um, who's already known the water walking, as he just thought his control was messed up, so he would have tried to relearn it. He wouldn't, he would tell Jiraiya he's already known the water walking, he just couldn't do it because his control was messed with. That's why he was reattempting it in hopes of regaining the control that he needed. Ezra says, ah, before telling Naruto that he has another jutsu, he has a jutsu he wants to teach him, before bringing out the summoning contract for the toads. Now you say, what? Yo, bro, he was trained by Tsunade. Does he not know the slug summoning? The slug contract? No, I didn't want Naruto to be Tsunade's next pupil. No, I wanted Naruto to still be Jiraiya's pupil. So Toshinori will not have the slug contract. He actually denied it from Tsunade, saying that he wanted her to find a true apprentice, not someone that was forced upon her. And that he she will always be his sensei, but he needs to find a master. Say that medical ninjutsu doesn't really suit him all that much, even though it does help. It doesn't suit him. So Naruto does agree with that. That's why he doesn't have it. So yeah, Naruto would sign the contract and would actually look over it. He finds three names ahead of his. One was Jiraiya. The other was a man by the name of Minato Namikaze, which he recognizes as his father, so his fingers like linger over it for a bit before he sees another worn out name. He can make, from what he can make out, it said something about Hagoromo Oto, and then really that's the rest of the name was really cut out. 
and wondered who was this person. As Jiraiya tells Naruto, hmm, it worked. you're confused about the first name. So am I. The toes never really told me who it was. But oh well. As Jiraiya continues, um, they began to begin training. And Naruto has a lot more chakra than, um, because he's, you know, 16. So he does get the summoning Jutsu down. And the first person he does summon is Gamakichi, which causes them to develop their, you know, friendship as canon. So Naruto does summon Gamabunsa without being thrown off a cliff. So, um, when Gamabunsa sees Naruto, he asked, are you our new summoner for some, cause he, um, because obviously a blonde kid, a, a blonde tall person with blonde hair appeared on his um head. Naruto would say yes. It reveals Gamakichi's on his shoulders. As Gamabunta would ask Kichi, "What are you doing here?" Before saying that this guy's a new summoner, he summoned him first. He was actually the first person, first thing he summoned. As Naruto revealed to him, Gamabunta was quite impressed. To summon his son on the first try was impressive, nonetheless. And Yamakichi is a bit bigger than normal. I forgot. Well, I don't know why I said he was smaller. He's actually no. I'm gonna have him be smaller. Yeah, because then Gamakichi be a full size toe by the time I get into Shippuden's events. So Gamakichi's a lot smaller. I really need to get this over with soon. So um, they begin their one. They, they continue the woman's training with Jiraiya teaching Naruto to tap into the Kyuubi's chakra, and they come to well, uh, they come to learn that of the. Um, they go to eventually time. I'm just gonna have a time skip. I, I don't know why I said they come to that or be. I don't know what I was gonna go with that. Again, it's all off the top of the head. So yeah. Um, Naruto, um, would appear in the arena, ready, waiting for well everyone until the practice starts. The arena, the mat of uh, the junior exams. This Gimma, she um, I forgot his last name. I think it's Shinuni, something like that. It's, it starts with an S. I know that. Um. So they would start the match between him and Neji. And to be fair, Neji stood no chance. Naruto using one for all would appear all around the battlefield, landing decisive blows against Neji that Neji could never hope to combat. As is, he wasn't strong enough nor fast enough to in hopes of, or not even with his Byakugan to keep up with Naruto. And when he tried to use Kaden, Naruto simply broke through it and still hit him. So he was very, he knew he stood no chance, so it even caused Neji to give up. Everyone seeing Naruto was still standing as if he had not spent a lot of energy, would be clapping because it was quite the spectacle. To see a Hyuga prodigy, especially for those of the clanless, the clanless shinobi, or and civilians who wanted to become shinobi along with the children, and civilians who had dreams of being shinobi but gave up on them because they didn't have class. To so see a clanless orphan, literally do to defeat a clan prodigy was quite impressive to them. So they were happy. And when eventually we get to Sasuke's match and he faces Gara and uses the Chidori causing Gara to retreat into his sand dome and eventually turn to Shikaku, the invasion of Konoha starts. But Naruto does something. Um, eventually, Naruto, Naruto um, obviously everyone in Konoha at this point, along with in the rookie nine, would know how to dispel the Genjutsu, except for those of, who were extremely weak, like Hinata, since he was still sort of injured, along with Lee. So, Kakashi would tell them to go fight Gara, and Naruto would tell them to wait, as Naruto would actually be stuck in the stadium, before bring, making a shadow clone, telling them to take it with him. The three... Um, anyways, um, Naruto would uh, send the Shadow Clone there as he continues to fight within the arena. He, he eventually makes his way to the Kage booth, where he breaks in before the barrier is actually erupted. Unbeknownst to Orochimaru or Hiruzen. So as Orochimaru summons the first two, and almost summons the third, Naruto would make his way towards Hiruzen before saying, I see you can help, you could use some help, old man. As Hiruzen says Naruto, in a grave tone, what are you doing here? Naruto says, protecting my Hokage. It's my job, is it not? As he smiles before taking off a blinding speed, delivering a devastating punch to um, Orochimaru. 
sending Orochimaru back towards the barrier, but Orochimaru would be able to stop himself before he hit it because he knew it would sort of disintegrate him. That's what the barrier was meant to do. So he could he could only place the ceiling tag within one shinobi. It was the first Okage. As Tobirama knew what was happening, he would immediately go through hand size, summoning a kunai of his own, before placing it within his own skull. As he gave him free will of his own on on his own jutsu, as he jumped towards where Hiruzen was, Naruto um he was Naruto on his way to intercept him. Hobi Shatoin the Hokage would land next to Hiruzen, preparing to fight his brother along the first Hokage along with Hiruzen. As Hiruzen would say, I really have to thank Naruto after this. As Tobirama said, Come, not even I could defeat my brother in a one on one battle. It's been a long time since I've been able to do that. As the two, two of them rushed towards Hashirama, Naruto begins fighting Hiro, um, Orochimaru, who calls him a brat and summons the Kusanagi. This is then when All Might begins to crack his knuckles, before releasing, bringing out a scroll and summoning something from it. As he places his hand inside, as there would be two sort of brass knuckles, uh, not brass, yeah, two brass knuckles, made of a special metal that Naruto learned, he, that Toshinori learned he can produce from his back. As he had them melted down and to create this, due to him not really liking using them, but he could still produce them, and he also learned that from it he can actually produce the same the same technique from these braces due to them being made of the technique. As Naruto would tell Orochimaru to bring it on now, before rushing towards him at blinding speeds, as Orochimaru had hoped to cut Naruto, only for Naruto to throw his fist out. As the Kusanagi blade comes in contact with the f bracer, stopping it dead in its track, only for Naruto to deliver a devastating uppercut to Orochimaru, sending him up. As Naruto appears, um, jumps up above him before delivering a devastating gut punch, sending Orochimaru back down. As he then begins, as he punches the air, sending himself down towards Orochimaru. I believe this is a smash technique, so I'm going to see which one it is. I was right. It's the New Hampshire smash. The smash. It's the New Hampshire smash. That's what he uses. He uses that to hit his body against the Rochimaru, causing an even deeper crater, causing Rochimaru to fall deeper into the building or which they landed on. Rochimaru would throw Naruto off of him before telling Naruto that he'll pay for this. Naruto tells him sorry about that, but he can't let him get a hold of the second Hokage. But he doesn't even think he can do that anymore because the second Hokage took control of himself. Shocking Orochimaru, he begins to think in anger. No, this should not be possible. As Naruto says sorry, but it is before Naruto will poof into a puff of smoke, only to reveal a pebble in front of Orochimaru to turn into Naruto. As he began spinning in the air before delivering a kick to Orochimaru's chest. Caving it in with that one hit. Ugh. Orochimaru would be quite in pain. But Naruto would tell him enough was enough. Before delivering a... Hmm, I'm going to have him do the Detroit Smash. It's kind of like my favorite one. Besides the Texas Smash. It's like they're just normal punches. It's so simplistic. I like those. So he uses that to sort of knock Orochimaru out of the fight for now. Dazing him enough for him to be unconscious only for a few moments. As he goes to help Hiruzen and the first Oka and the second Hokage take out Hashirama. So when Naruto appears, he actually kicks through Hashirama's stomach, causing Hashirama um kicks his leg through Hashirama as the strength of the kick was enough to cut right through his body. Hashirama's body does reform. He says that's quite the powerful kick. Only for Naruto to spin in the air and deliver a kick to his head. And use that kick to also kick off, kick himself towards um, here's it, landing next to him with his braces on his hand. No, oh, with his um knuckle braces. What are those things called? I just named them, I think, and I forgot it. Oh my god. Anyways, as you're gonna tell Naruto, he's his Taiju Jutsu has improved a lot. Naruto thanks him before they see Hashirama going to deliver a devastating um, I think he's an axe kick to them. Only for Naruto to bring his hand up and to bat it away. Now, I'm not saying in physical strength he's comparable to the first Okage yet. At this moment, the first Okage is heavily suppressed. Naruto will be able to do so, but just not now. So, 
if it, yeah, you you get what I mean. So uh, Toshi Nori was sitting in the Hokage back as he jumps into the air before telling Hiruzen and Toby Rama to prepare. As Toby Rama and Hiruzen do a combination technique, a um, lightning style blast from Hiruzen with a water dragon from Toby Rama. As Naruto threw Hashirama into the meeting point of where the two Jutsus would meet, causing the Jutsus to hit him. It would be enough as Toby Rama, Hiruzen tells Toby Rama what he planned to do before Toby Rama would tell him not yet. He should enjoy retirement after this to find a successor. He should find a successor before um, knocking Hiruzen out and using a technique to sort of similar to the Yamanakas to get the information on the Jutsu he needed before going through the technique himself. Using the Reaper Death Seal to seal away um, Hashirama, Tobirama would eventually grab hold of Rorochimaru, but due to his soul being eaten by the Shinigami, or partially taken from him now that he sealed Hashirama away, he also needs to, he can only take a bit of Orochimaru and takes his arm just like he is. It's not that he's old and doesn't have enough chakra, it's just the complications of using the technique and not having preparations for using said technique. As Tobirama falls to the ground, body decaying along with Hashirama's, as Orochimaru's arms turn purple, we see Naruto fall to the ground a bit tired. Saying that took a lot of him out of him, a lot more than anything else. As he him say, Naruto, I have about to promote you to the rank of Jun of Chunin. I was gonna give him a Joni rank, a Junin rank, Joni rank, whatever you wanna call it, and call it a day, but nah. Now it's just gonna be promoted to Chunin. Now it's a thanks though, man, before passing out along with Hirzen, as the Ambu grab the two and take them out of the battle zone. When two come to, they would notice they're in the same hospital as Naruto smiles before saying, Thanks for not dying on me, old man. I wouldn't I would hate to have to find, to listen to a new Hokage. Susan tells Naruto he's sorry to burst his bubble, but he is going to need to listen to a new Hokage. Before asking her to telling her to come in as he could sense her. As Naruto was surprised, his sensei was here. So yes, there is no need for the Tsunade retrieval mission. Naruto would say sensei before getting up, only for Tsunade to send him back down to the bed with the punch, telling him to sit back down that he's still recovering. As Naruto says, I don't think it's best for a medic to hit her patients. As Naruto begins to bleed from the cut, but Naruto smiles and hears a shot because he didn't know Tsunade had gotten over her hemophobia. But apparently she did. Naruto sees the shock and says, oh yeah, her hemophobia. It kind of got hit a lot when um, she was training me and she had to get over that real fast. So, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah. Anyways, Naruto would be happy to see his sensei before asking if Shizune and Tauntaun are here. And she said yes. Naruto then asked Hiruzen why did why is why is his sensei here? Before Hiruzen will reveal that Tsunade will be taking up the position of fifth Okage. Naruto smiles and during the time Hiruzen would step down and they would hold a funeral after he stepped down a days later. And week after that she would be inaugurated as the fifth Okage. And during that time Itachi and Kisame would come to the village. As Sasuke would feel the chakra of Itachi, as he could not forget that chakra. As he would come to the battlefield to see Itachi battling Naruto, he noticed they were in a sort of place of the village where Naruto lived. He wondered as his brother told Naruto to come with him, that he was tired of and he didn't want to attract unnecessary attention. Sasuke, angered that Itachi was after Naruto and didn't come here to fight him, Rushed in with a Chidori only for Itachi to see him and to break his wrist before placing him within a Sukuyomi really fast. His Naruto was a lot more powerful than he remembered. Naruto would rush towards Itachi before delivering a devastating punch to his nose, breaking it and sending his fate and sending him back with the pressure from this punch from the wind. As Kisame had gone to attack Naruto, but Naruto, when Samehara had Bit down on his shoulder with Kisame holding on to it. Naruto spun, sending Samehara along with Kisame off of him. Eventually, the Jonin along with Tsunade, Jiraiya, and an old man, Yuzen, would arrive. As Itachi and Kisame would have to retreat. Now, over time, Tsunade would 
Um, but it, the damage had already been done. But Tsunade would um, trick Sasuke. And Sasuke would be recovered from the technique. Which would cause Sasuke to leave the village. Now, from this, for Sasuke to leave the village successfully, with, especially with Naruto or Toshinori being there, I'm going to have to have Naruto out on a different mission at the time. And by the time he comes back, he'll learn of Sasuke no longer being within Konoha. And actually be due to this that Naruto, uh, learning that he went to Orochimaru, Naruto would be told by Jiraiya that he's going to take him on a three-year training trip. And this is where we time skip. Now, it's been an hour so far. Which means we're good. So we try, we time skip three years from the day Naruto leaves Konoha. We see Naruto appear back within Konoha with Aizumo and Kotetsu welcoming him with a warm welcome. As Sakura comes to Aizumo and Kotetsu, they smile saying, Haven't you heard the news? As Sakura wonders what news. As she hears a voice says, Konoha, do not worry. Why? As she recognizes that voice and rushes towards it. Because I am here. Okay, so now we're into a time skip. So let's get into it. Naruto would first come back to Konoha. Like I said, we've already went over this. Every, uh, we're over the part of where he meets um, Sakura and you know, Sakura and them learn of Naruto's into the village. So we pick up there. Sakura and them find Naruto on top of a on top of a sort of pole. I think it's like a telephone pole, but. They don't have phones at this point, so you know, I don't think they have phones in Boruto either, they just have video game systems, which is weird, but oh well. <clears throat> but they have um, uh, this pole that Naruto's standing on. Naruto looks a lot different from well, Toshinori looks more like his. You we seen what he looks like in Two Heroes when he first meet David, he's basically wearing that out that exact outfit <clears throat> as Sakura. Says, wow, Naruto seems to have even grown even further than what he once was. Now, this is where he stands at his true height of around <clears throat> seven foot tall at a, at 19 years old. Because I believe it was either a two or three year time skip with the, between Naruto and Shippuden. Because early Naruto left when he was 12, came back when he was 15. He turned 16 before the um sometime a couple um like a year before the war and then turned 17 during the war so yeah which I'll try to prevent I don't really know if I want to go into the war but yeah <clears throat> now you guys um may ask what what am I going to be doing about Naruto and Sasuke well. Toshinori would do every, whatever it takes to bring Sasuke back. And now Toshinori, while still having lived the life as All Might, has now lived the life of a shinobi. And knows that Sasuke is a traitor. And knows that now that Sasuke has literally gone to one of Konoha's biggest traitors in history, Sasuke won't be given any leniency. And will more than likely either be given to, well, to Donzo. Because Naruto knows of Donzo. Donzo has tried to recruit him many times. Or he'd be placed in prison or be executed on treason. So they Naruto knows that Sasuke probably if he Naruto knows that Sasuke cannot be brought back and be brought back to Konoha as if nothing happened. And no, he didn't make that promise with Sakura. So yeah, it really doesn't change much. So Naruto comes back to the village where he um interest where he's intercepted by Sakura, talks to Konohamaru, and Sakura even asks is he matured any bit. And Sakura really looks like her um <clears throat> um canon 19 year old self, and I'm not saying she's that strong because she won't reach that age until well what would have been okay, she's 19 from her 17 year old self. So she seventeen to nineteen. She won't be reaching that strong until she's around twenty one, and then on from there. So. <clears throat> so, anyways, Naruto once meeting up with them all would head towards the Okage's tower where he meets Tsunade. Tsunade be so happy to see Naruto as again she was once her student. As um, Tsunade asked how was his training with Jiraiya, with Jiraiya, he said it was interesting, to say the least. But he's had fun, and he can feel that he's gotten somewhat stronger. He doesn't know how by how much, but he has gotten stronger. Tsunade smiles. 
as <clears throat> she tells Naruto, why don't they test him? And this is then when Toshinori would begin to pick up on um, the overtime. He actually developed his negative emotion sensing to where he can actually just from by like reworking the negative emotion sensing. He from there, he's developed his own ability of being a sensor man. So he can now sense people. So he could sense some chakra outside of the window. So he goes out to see who it is. Only to see Kakashi. Smiling, he then brings out a book for Kakashi, giving him it as gift. Kakashi is quite happy. It wouldn't be until Tsunade would reveal that they're going to be doing the bell test again. Actually, she would actually reveal it to Naruto that they're going to be testing again, doing the bell test to see how far they've come in the time since they were once tested when they were 16. So, Naruto would obviously agree. He has no problem with this. And this is when, to, but before they leave, this is when Tamari and Shikamaru will come in. Tamari is happy, yet happy, um, happy to see Naruto along with Shikamaru. As Naruto did save Tamari's brother from being, well, the murderous psychopath that he once was. When now Gara is something even greater. Over time, Naruto even learns that everyone else has been promoted to tuning and some even Joni. He asks Tamari had Gara been promoted at all, and Tamari chuckles before saying, Yeah, Gara's the Kage, the um the Kaze Kage of the Hidden Sand Village. Naruto is happy for his friend. At least the people of his village had begin to accept him. For being a Jinchuriki. He was still slightly working on that. As they go and take the test for the bell test, I really don't see Kakashi ever surviving this. With two powerhouses, like in straight physical powerhouses such as All Might or Toshinori and Sakura. I was going to say Sakamaru. <laughs> Sakura. It, this is not a fight Kakashi is going to be able to get away from. Especially with Naruto being able to sense Kakashi also. Hmm. <clears throat> So Kikashi would be quite surprised, would be taken care of easily, and Naruto wouldn't even reveal, have to go into revealing the secrets of the book. It would be quite an easy task for the two of them. Naruto's enhanced speed even further, that's been enhanced even further due to his training with Jiraiya. Naruto's and um, Sakura's enhanced strength due to her training with Tsunade. It makes them quite the formidable team, team of powerhouses. It wouldn't be until later on that they learn of the Kaze Kage being kidnapped. So they go on the Kaze Kage rescue mission where they head to Suna where they Sakura has to heal um I believe it was Conqueror. I'm not sure if she had to heal that other elder. Um that elder Chio's brother, I'm not sure. I, I can't really remember is really what I should say. I can't remember. But let's just say she had to heal him also. And as they debar as they um as Conqueror tells them of Sasori's poison, Sakura makes an antidote. And they even bring Lady Chio along with him. And Samari stays behind. It'd be Naruto, Gara. I mean Naruto, Kakashi, Sakura, um, um, uh, I believe Chio, and then there would be Tingai, who I believe is ahead of them at this point. So, where they would go, they would meet up with these two Akatsuki members, Itachi and Kisame. But Naruto would dispatch Itachi quite quickly. Itachi, no, Naruto could enter one for all faster than Itachi could activate a Sharingan and could even enter full cowling even faster. Well, could use full cowling a lot faster than Itachi could activate his Sharingan. So, he would dispatch Itachi quite quickly. Kisame's clone thing would be where it's harder at but with the help of Kakashi they'd be able to um, knock the sword away from him and place K Kisame in the Genjutsu for Kakashi to deliver a um, Raikiri to his chest but well, to him killing the um, killing Kisame and I say that in Itachi in quotations so it is revealed that it's later two ninjas doing um, under a transformation type technique that gives them 30% of the powers along with a transformation to that of the person that they're imitating. So, I believe that's how strong it was for them. <clears throat> they would eventually head on where they'd meet up with Team Guy. Where they'd come across these boulders only to see 
sorcery and data um, where they rip them off. Um, Naruto and Sakura delivering a devastating punch will rip them off. I need to see Sasori and Daedara now still going through the process of taking out, taking Garo Biju out. Yes, Naruto and Team 7 did arrive a lot sooner due to Naruto not really wanting them to go to, um, not to be too late. You know, Kakashi could have easily just sent Naruto ahead of time, over ahead, but since Naruto is also a Jinchuriki, he didn't want to risk the chance of Naruto being captured. So what Naruto did was have everyone jump on and jump up into the air to get there a lot faster than what they would be able to do on land um, by while running at full speed. Well, as fast as they can, because, you know, they also have to wait for Chiyo. Chiyo's not as fast as them, but she's still pretty fast. So they arrived there a lot sooner, allowing them to actually keep guard from Tell Beast from being extracted fully as Naruto would not destroy the ghetto Mazo, but would injure it enough to where the ceiling was cut off and it would need time to heal, causing pain to reverse summon it back to himself after the orange after some figure on in the um and one of the uh, one of the nine figures told him to. So pain would reverse summon it away as the Bijou chakra would flow from the ghetto Mazo back into Gara as it had not been extracted fully. Gara is rescued but unconscious and actually on the brink of death. But due to this, now Sorcery and Daedara plan to just kill Gara. But they don't be they won't be able to get off of it in time as Naruto lands on top of Sorcery, destroying his Hiroko puppet. As Daedara plans to get away, as he knows that he needs to get far enough away for him to battle these people without Sorcery getting caught in the crossfire. Naruto will then grab Gara before heading um before coming towards where Team Guy is. Seeing that all three of them are struggling, Naruto will destroy the clones with not ease, but he will destroy the clones seeing as how he has the element of surprise on the clones. These clones that have the exact same powers as Team Guy. So Naruto will destroy them and would give them to Gara, telling Ninji to look over him. And if any of them know any medical ninjutsu, try using it on Gara to Keep him sustained or as uh, as or uh, as alive as long as possible. So once this happens, Team Seven now to meet up with Kakashi and they ch give chase to Daedara as Sakura and Sas um and Chiyo fight Sorcery. Now Daedara stands no chance of giving up on Naruto because Toshinori's eyes are now red and he's leaking QB's chakra, which causes his yellow lightning from. The uh, full cowling to turn blood red as he began shooting off far faster than what Hikashi has ever seen Naruto take off at. Toshinori knowing he needs to rein in his anger, but it's so hard to give in to not give in because they'd hurt a close friend of his own. So Toshinori actually ends up literally speeding, speed blitzing Daedara, hitting him into the side of this little ravine that they're in. And as he does so, like using chakra to keep him stuck in place, he began laying punch after punch after punch into Daedara. Now, this Daedara has not yet been given the chance to substitute yet. It wouldn't be until Kakashi would land next to Naruto using the tree walking chakra exercise to stick to the side of the ravine to grab Naruto to calm him down, seeing that Daedara is now there. But, I mean, and it looks like he's unconscious, but unbeknownst to them, Daedara would hold up a hand side. As he said, cuts as, you know, Daedara would explode, revealing that Daedara has substituted himself using the, uh, since the ravine is sort of made of earth, he would use the earth trap, um, he would use an earth clone that and would substitute with it before infusing the earth clone with his own chakra, which is the explosion release, and causing it to, to explode. This would actually hurt Kakashi, causing Naruto to go even further into a rage, releasing two tails worth of chakra. Seeing Kakashi is hurt, he he rushed towards Kakashi before he could hit the ground, and what and as he land with Kakashi in his arm before taking Guff, jumping clean down from the bottom of the ravine all the way to the top. As he looked around for Daedara, but Daedara had been long gone. But Naruto would see that Daedara's arm was left behind. It's actually a something he had to sacrifice in hopes of getting away from Naruto. I still want him to lose his arm so that... Well, actually, no, he doesn't have to lose his arm. Because it's not really necessary. 
Toby would still go look for Sasori's ring, which has not yet been defeated. So by the time Naruto calms down, he'd be heading. He'd already be heading his way back to Sasori's battle in hopes of killing him instead of Dater, as he had just as much in um, involvement in Gara's um, defeat along with his state of person in mind, and and along with the state of um, the state he's in currently. So once arriving, Sasori had not yet been defeated. But when he arrives, Chio tells Naruto, seeing that he's enveloped in a 2 tails cloak and sees that he's barely holding on, will tell him to destroy Sasori's heart. That thing, that that um, symbol, the white um, circle thing with the kanji in the middle, that's his heart, and to destroy that, and it'll kill Sasori. And when Naruto will place... Um, Kakashi Davenport, as Chio would stop helping Sakura. Sakura, feeling the a malicious intent coming from Naruto, unlike any other, would jump back, a bit scared, as Naruto rushed Sasori so fast, as he placed his, he ripped the puppet apart before grabbing the heart, as he tried to get away to go to another puppet, as he grabbed the heart before crushing it in his hand. As Sasori, <clears throat> seeing this, would be barely holding on before telling Naruto of what to do. Now, I know he says he needs his heart to control the puppet, but for now, I'm just going to give him so that they have a reason to go meet up with Orochimaru. So, once um, this, Sasori would tell him of his spy and where to meet him up, meet him at. Um, he says he has a spy within Orochimaru's organization, within Orochimaru's um, close group, and telling him to meet him at. The Tensi Bridge. I had to remember what the bridge was because I was going to... I remember... What was that bridge that um, Kakashi and Obito and them went to? It was that bridge that I was originally thinking of, but I had to make sure I was talking about the right bridge. So, once telling Naruto the information, Sasori would die and Chio would grab his puppet. Um, puppet body before taking it back with her as they head back to um, Neji's team where Chio actually heals Gara, not and Sakura heals Gara. Not having to give up her own life. So, but after this, Chiyo does decide to retire. So when they head back to um, Suna, Chiyo gives Sasori the I'm um, not Sasori gives Sasori to Conqueror and telling Conqueror that she's going to make sure he becomes the next puppet master of of uh, the Sand Village before announcing that she'll be retiring and teaching Conqueror everything she knows. Conqueror, who's now healed is thankful to Team 7, along with Team God for saving his brother, and thank very thankful for Chia, to Chia. Now, as they move on, they head back to Konoha, where they begin tra um, training, and where they, well, actually, they would have rest. As Naruto and Team 7 continue, they would eventually meet the new member of their team, but Toshinori comes to Tsunade before asking why is there another person on their team besides, you know, the replacement, obviously, as Kakashi is healing out due to his injuries, not due to chakra exhaustion. As Tsunade says that Donzo has placed him within it, and she can't refute it because the, the two elders had went against her behind her back and had approved the placement of Donzo, one of Donzo's agents onto her team, before telling Naruto about Root. And she tells Naruto if this young man does anything suspicious to take him out, well, to knock him out, and to place him within a stasis pool for throwing one at Naruto. <clears throat> as Naruto would place it within his um, pocket, as they eventually head out with this new team, um, the new um, team leader, Yamato, and Sai. Now, once at the Tenshi Bridge, Yamato would ask Naruto, what exactly did, uh, what I Sakura actually, what did Sasori sound like in his puppet hero cup? Before Naruto would eventually tell, um, tell, um, would eventually tell, um, uh, Yamato of what Sasori looked like outside of the hero cup puppet. So Yamato would use a wood transformation on himself to transform into, um, Sasori's pu puppet body, then would tr use the wood style technique to create a, clone version of Sas Sasori's Hiroko puppet. I think that's what it was called, or his um, Scorpion puppet. You know, the one he uses normally before getting his voice right, as the Team 7 would hide out and uh, would hide um, somewhere around 
um, in the bushes behind the bridge as Kabuto would appear. Now this shocks Naruto, but beginning to be angered, he slowly feels the Kyuubi's chakra surfacing around him, but he holds it down, entering full cowling so that he'd be prepared at any moment. Eventually, Sasori would betray, I mean not Sasori, Kabuto would betray what would be Sasori as Yamato would jump out of the puppet body. When Orochimaru appeared, after Orochimaru had appeared, but Orochimaru was surprised. So, the rumors weren't true. You aren't actually dead, Sasori. Telling, um, having got Sasori's voice down, the second voice, which is his puppet voice down, he wants to say, Orochimaru, I've come here to kill you. Now do it now. As he said now, Naruto and Team 7 would all come out. Well, Naruto and Team Kakashi, which is just him and Sakura, really, but inside, would all come out to face Kabuto along with um, Orochimaru. Now, Orochimaru begins to essentially anger Naruto, Toshinori even further with his talks about Sasuke. Toshinori would eventually enter a three tails state. As from the three tells state, he began rushing Orochimaru at speeds Orochimaru never knew Naruto could reach. The three tells cloak shouldn't have gotten Naruto this strong. It was that other power of his, as he could see the red lightning coming off of this. As Naruto began attacking him, causing Orochimaru to jump back. Eventually, they their battle would leave a giant crater where they're fighting. As Naruto, Orochimaru tempts Naruto so much that he eventually enters the fourth the four tail state, losing full control over his um over his body to the nine tails, who is actually tapping into Naruto's own one for all power. So when the nine tails begins fighting Orochimaru and tearing him limb for limb as he continuously keeps regenerating, he began to build up build up a Biju Bomb. As he does a tell Beast Bomb or Biju Dama, as he does so, Orochimaru notices something is odd about this Biju Dama. He can sense that the strength within it has been multiplied, far surpassing of what the foretell state should have been able to produce. Now I say this is maybe like a six, if not seven tailed Biju Bomb in strength due to the amp of one for all into it. As the lightning begins to spark off of the Biju Bomb as he swallows it, before releasing it as a beam as it destroys all of Orochimaru's Rashomon gates. Sending the attack actually through to Orochimaru, and I wouldn't obliterate him, but it would cause significant damage, causing Orochimaru to retreat. As um, Yamato was watching Orochimaru retreat, they would all head off. As Yamato, well, before, but Yamato would not actually. He would suppress Naruto's Nine Tails Chakra, as Sakura would come back to heal Naruto, and then they would head off as Naruto was recovered enough to continue to fight. Entering one for all. I'm not use. I'm using just plain one for all rather than full cowing. Toshinori would continue, would head up head on ahead of everyone else using his sensory ability to find Sasuke faster than anyone, faster than even Sai could. It wouldn't be until he saw Sai coming that he grew a bit suspicious of him. So seeing that he had a suspicion of Sai, he would actually knock Sai out before he could make and grab his mouth so that he couldn't make a noise as he sealed him away into a scroll. As he um, entered Sasuke's room, Sasuke would turn around, trying to place Naruto under a genjutsu. But the Kiwi Sakura, along with one for all, would prevent that from happening. Sasuke would fully turn around, looking at the person who's in his room. Surprised to see Naruto, as Naruto will tell Sasuke that he's going to bring him back to Konoha, whether he comes willingly or on a stretcher, or even in a body bag if he has to. Sasuke was smirked before releasing a fireball, which would actually cause an explosion, sending a signal to where he is to Sasuke, to um, Sakura and Tenzo, or Yamato. As they all head there, they see Naruto facing off with Sasuke. Naruto would, um, they would ask where Sai is before Naruto would reveal the scroll, telling Yamato that Sai is in here as he believes Sai has, was, I'm working for Donzo to deliver information to Orochimaru. As they didn't know where, how Sai, Sai was here before he was. But he found Sasuke before Sai did. 
Tenzo would nod before telling Naruto to keep the scroll hidden away. As Sai would, um, and Sasuke would say, would have his introductions with Sakura and even asking where Kakashi was. But eventually, he would jump down towards Naruto. But before he could even touch Naruto, Toshinori had grabbed his arm. Before literally throwing, like literally grabbing Sasuke's arm and throwing him against the wall. Surprising everyone at the speed at which he'd done so. Orochimaru would eventually appear, telling Sasuke he was nowhere near strong enough to take Naruto on. Sasuke was surprised to hear that. As Orochimaru told Sasuke that he'd fought Naruto recently and he could have lost if the boy had lost control. But if the boy gains control over that tail of his, then he'd literally become one of the strongest shinobis there um, he'd ever face. Sasuke would be angered by this. His training was for not as Naruto was still surpassing him. That wasn't me. He needed to surpass Sasuke, Naruto so that he could eventually go to, uh, so he could get surpass Itachi before going to kill him. It wouldn't be until um, they would leave in a flaming body flicker that the two that Naruto would begin to calm down a lot more as he collapsed from exhaustion, causing Sasuke, Sakura and Tenzo to have to transport him back to Konoha. As he never entered the foretale state with full counting, and his adrenaline was the only thing keeping him awake and conscious throughout the entirety of heading to Orochimaru's base and facing Sasuke. As Naruto um, would eventually wake up in the hospital. As Tsunade would tell Naruto that he really went over his limit today. As Rai would tell Naruto that he knows not to use one for all when being angered by the when the QB is influencing him. As Naruto says that Orochimaru did this, that he had control in a three-tailed state. Even though he was angered, he had control. He could, enter, he could lose control in any of his tailed states. Jirai reminds him of that. But Naruto says, but Orochimaru tempted him and angered him enough for him to enter the foretale state. And apparently the QB can also use one for all when in the control of his body. Jirai is shocked to hear that. Before telling Naruto that they'll have to continue his training further from this. As Naruto nods. Alright, so now let's get into the Akatsuki suppression mission. This is the next canon arc. So, time, some time would pass until one day the Guardians, I believe that's what they were, um, the... They were these monks of Fire Nation. I, I know that's sort of a description. I believe they the um they weren't the Guardian Twelve. I I'm, think they were former members of the Guardian Twelve. I'm not sure, but they were the temple where they were was attacked by the Akatsuki. So the Akatsuki they learned of the Akatsuki approaching the temple. So what they did was they requested for a team to be sent out, and with Tsunade knowing of the threat of the Akatsuki would be there waiting to um <clears throat> would send out a team to wait there in the pa and to take on the Akatsuki members. Now this was not a clue Naruto nor anybody he cares about. But it does include one person. That includes Asuma. Now Asuma had recently begun training Naruto in his wind manipulation thanks to Naruto Kakashi introducing um, Naruto to Asuma because this in this world in this timeline Hikashi did not decided not to train Naruto on win release because he knew he wouldn't be able to teach him to the best to the best of his ability so why not have someone who is a proficient win user teach him besides Donzo obviously <clears throat> so Naruto had been trained by Asuma and when well Asuma comes to face Hidon and Hidon kills him and they eventually learn of it no, Naruto's training, Naruto's anger so much. Now, Kakashi, this is where the point of when, when this was happening, Kakashi had taken over his training because Naruto had surpassed the second portion, which was a uh, wind release exercises, which was cutting the waterfall. He already cut the leaf, I'd cut the waterfall thanks to Asuma's help. With Asuma's supervision and him taping him, helping him. Now, Naruto was working on adding a wind nature to the Sengon and even taking it further beyond. 
where we would learn, where Toshinoi would learn the wind style Rasen Shur create the wind style Rasen Shuriken along with the wind style Rasen God. You know, Tsunade does forbid it. Now you may ask, when did Naruto learn the Rasengan? Because I'm, I'm not sure if I had Toshinori learn it. Because, it's, again, it's been like, what, three, four days since I recorded the first portion of this what if. So, yeah. Um, But Toshinori would learn, recreate the Wind Star Rasengan and Wind Star Rasen Shuriken. And would come up with, and Kakashi and As Asuma would have also taught him many other Wind Star Ninjutsu before he left. Because he's not going to spend the entire time learning on focusing on a wind style when Naruto has literally no wind style techniques in his arsenal. So, <clears throat> so when Naruto learns of Asuma's death, he's greatly angered by this, and, I, and when he hears of, you know, team um team ten, which includes. Shikamaru, you know, and Choji going out with Kakashi mm -hmm. as their backup sensei to fight the Akatsuki. He leaves with, um, what is his name? Yamato to go and help the two of them. So by the time they arrived, Shikamaru had already taken Hidon out of the way. And Kakashi was fighting with Kakazu. But Toshinori would appear, he would have destroyed three of, of his mask. I'm going to have it to where Kakashi was not yet able... It, he still had he had about four of his five of his five masks, and Naruto destroyed three of them, which left Kakuzu's original heart and one more mask. That mask that he had left was the fire style mask. So he would use the searing migraine in hopes of Toshi, Toshinori or Naruto being burnt by it. But Toshinori, having the bright idea, would try a new technique. <clears throat> It was a one for all technique by infusing um it was a technique he had come up with after trying to span away from his smash his whole smash ordeal. He swing his arm in a wide arc and doing so well, well while the arm is enhanced with one for all, just one for all in its own. And doing so it created a a wind pressure that swept across the flames and sort of deflected it with how strong the wind pressure was. Or deflected it back towards where Kakazu was going. So Kakuzu, while surprised, would have to jump away from his mask and would even recall it back into him so that it would not be damaged. Kakuzu would want to go and find, um, but would go, want to go and find, <clears throat> would want to go and find Kak um, Hidan. And when he jumped away, Naruto seemingly appeared right behind him before wrapping his body around him, before thanking Guy Sensei for teaching him this technique. As he began to spin, yellow lightning began to emit off of his body. As these red lines began to appear before it, well, you know, before it. As he began to spin, they began to spin even more. As he begins to use his feet, kicking them, increasing the pressure and the speed of which they fell, um, increasing the speed of which they fell. As he began to spin them, He'd say, "Primary smash." It's like it's like a mix of the primary lotus and this and a um and using one for all. He does call it smash, but he really doesn't have to. But I like the name primary smash. It just sounds so cool. Yeah, dirty at the same time. I'm gonna be honest with you. So um, he'd use it against Kakazu, bring bringing him into the ground. Now Kakazu's. Um, would have in order to live, he would have to actually separate his um, would actually have to sacrifice the fire heart. Naruto, um, Kakashi telling Naruto, um, after Naruto jumped back and Kakashi explained the situation, Naruto rather than using a Rasen Shuriken would actually use a Wind Style Rasengan, not wanting anyone to yet know the technique because he had not yet found a way to throw it. Using the Rasen, mini Rasen, um, uh, West Star Rasengan, which is a, in essence, a mini version of the Rasen Shuriken, is just on a much smaller scale. Would and use the um, technique to impact it against Hakakazu when the micro blades. He would actually use it at his heart, so that it would literally carve through his heart, destroying Kakazu, and actually ended up being one of Toshi. Toshinori's few kills that he's had within the series so far. Toshinori does know that this man definitely deserved to die. 
if he was stealing the hearts of others to continue to live for years, how he he doesn't want to know how long this man has been doing so and how many lives he's ruined by doing it. But what he does do is he does say a prayer for the man. Something he learned in hopes of these people getting blessed in their new life. I did kind of take this from Demon Slayer, but I do like that. Something that I could see All Might hoping, wishing upon his enemies to have a peaceful afterlife or a peaceful reincarnation. As he is a symbol of peace and does want to continue to... Um, it's, and, uh, I just want to continue to promote that. Now he knows without the if the Akoski is still around that they're going to be a problem that he cannot get rid of. So, yeah. Now by the time Naruto and this team will return, Naruto will learn of Jiraiya's departure to actually um the Hidden Rain Village. As Sinari knows that if Jiraiya doesn't make it back and Naruto doesn't know, Naruto will be um, would be furious and might go there himself. But Naruto learning of the dangers would even de embark, even though Tsunade had sent many people to stop him. By the time Naruto would make it to the rain village, Jiraiya would have barely just arrived. And Jiraiya would be surprised to see his blonde haired student standing right in front of him, before asking Naruto what is he doing here. As Naruto says, do you really think that I'm going to just let you, you know, Fight the um fight in the place of where you suspect the Akatsuki might be based off of by yourself. As Jiraiya said, <laughs> No, I don't I didn't suspect you to. As Jiraiya would tell Naruto that he'll give him a signal, but for now to do that thing. As Naruto nods, as Naruto would sit down with a bunch of shadow clones as they begin to meditate. As Naruto begins to sense it, as pain eventually comes out. But as Jiraiya, as Naruto now sees Jiraiya is now facing the six paths of pain with uh, Fukusaku and Ma, with Ma and Pa on his um on his shoulders and saves Mo currently. As Jiraiya would say, Nagato, Conan, I don't know what pushed you to become what you are, but we will stop you. Is it that right, Ma and Pa? If I can't stop you, if we can't stop you, he most certainly will. Pain is a bit confused, only for the diva path of Pain's head to literally be not clean off with a punch. The other paths of Pain turn around and jump back, only to see Naruto. The nine-touch and Shuriki with orange markings, orange pigmentation around his eyes, his eyes in a sort of bar-like state. As Jiraiya would say, kid, I'm really jealous of you, you know? I could never seem to perfect stage mode and look at you. You got it down quite easily. Now as Naruto would smile. But Jiraiya couldn't even tell that darkness in Naruto's eyes. The smile was not a genuine happy smile of Naruto. Naruto was truly going to go all out. Toshinori would rush towards the paths of pain along with Jiraiya. He's throwing just furious blows. His, he, his anger is boosting his, his own anger. You do get a sort of strength boost with anger, but it's not by much. But, it's, but compared, comparably, it's not much. But his anger boosting his own um, punches with one for all, or well, it's just ordering originally one for all, is seemingly one of the most deadliest things. As he's taking out paths after passes, him and Jiraiya are splitting up the paths. And Naruto's usage of shadow clones and it not splitting one for all is something completely dangerous. Now, this is an ability I never really went into. Does the shadow clone jutsu split one for all? Now, you guys may say, yes, it should split one for all, but I actually like it like this. The ability to split himself with his clones being just as physically strong as he is, using the same power without, with, to the same extent of which he could. He's just not, a, they're just not as durable. So having each of his shadow clone take on a path of pain, besides the ones Jiraiya was fighting, Naruto and Jiraiya would actually completely decimate them. The two sage Senjutsu users would have completely decimated it. It would actually cause for Konan to interfere into the battle to retrieve Nagato along with the, I believe it was not the animal path, I think it was not the outer path either, it was um, 
Which path can summon the King of Hell? I think it was either the Naraka path or the Ashura path. Or was that the human path? Or was it the Praetor? I know one of the paths of pain can summon the King of Hell and use that and would have that pain. They were, the Mujur, they were taken out. She would take them away so they, they could heal Nagat Yahiko's body. But Jiraiya would tell Konan not to come back to Konan. <clears throat> that they mean business, and they wouldn't let her get away. As Conan began to go, Naruto and Jiraiya would stand still. She wonders why they're not following her. It wouldn't be until later that she realized they had followed her to Nagato's location. Jiraiya was surprised to see his student alive and well. He, didn't, he thought Nagato, he knew Nagato was alive, but this was barely alive, if you could even call it that. As Conan is surprised by her master's words, was she surprised when Jirai, um is has followed him again? Like I said, I had to stop recording for a second that they leave. But um, yes, Nagato Jirai would see that his student was alive, but he wouldn't really call this living. Look at him; he was frail and seemed to be dying, as in a sense. And the only thing that seemed to be keeping him alive was this contraption he was in. As not all my seeing this would ask the man, was he okay? Before Jiraiya would tell Naruto to stand back. So Naruto asked this woman who's obviously hurting him. Before Jiraiya would say, no, Naruto. What you're looking at is the real pain. He is the real pain, Naruto. Are you on, Sensei? Nagato is the one with the Renegade. With the Renegade. So what do you, you mean to tell me this is pain? As he angered, he asked pain, why is he doing all that he's doing? As pain says for peace, Nar Jiraiya and Naruto angered would say, what peace? All you've done was spent on a dream that I warned you and your t and you, Yahiko and Konan to accomplish. As Nagato would tell Jiraiya, he wouldn't understand. Yahiko had died. He killed him. He, Yahiko. The reason they were forced into this situation was because of the Shinobi world. The other countries. Strayer would say, I'm sorry, Nagato. But you shouldn't have gone this far. Trying to capture the, the Ten Tails for what? To bring peace, Master. Like you wanted us to. No, no. I wanted to bring peace in the right way, not this way. As Conan would yell at Jiraiya, saying that you weren't there, you wouldn't understand what it was like for us. As Jiraiya says, and that's the one thing I hate the most, the one thing I'm ashamed of the most, was that I wasn't there to protect my students. This does surprise Conan and Nagato. She says, if I could switch places with Yahiko, I would have. I should have brought you guys back with me to Kona. But would you guys have truly grown the same strong? Would you guys really have had a better life at Kona? I think not. Before Jiraiya would tell them, tell Nagato that this ends now. Only for a voice to appear behind them. Yes, it does. As a man stabs a rod through Jiraiya's back. Shocking them all. As Naruto sees this, he throws a punch. The man sees with his own shine guard that Naruto punch won't land, but is surprisingly blown out of the building, well, through mul and through multiple buildings, because of the pressure behind Naruto's own hit. Naruto would ask, how could you let your own master, the man who took care of you, who ra helped raise you guys to become, who helped teach you guys to become the strong people that you are today, how could you let that man do that so Do you really not care? Peace is not brought through war. Peace is not, well, peace, well it was brought through war for Naruto. Peace is not brought through, brought through violence, through destruction. No, 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 no. It's not. This is where you guys were wrong. Peace is brought through understanding. 
through a common goal. Evie Akoski has created that. That's true. A common goal for the elemental nations to pursue. And maybe after. Peace can be brought. It wouldn't be until Naruto would tell Nagato of his life. Of how he had learned. <clears throat> and how one day while. Now I'm actually going to have this meeting cap a lot happen a lot earlier during the time skip. Naruto told Nagato that. When he was with Jiraiya training, 10 months, um, like a couple months ago, Jiraiya and him were experimenting to see how far beyond the foretale state he can go, and Jiraiya loosened the seal way too much, causing Naruto to enter an eight-tailed state. And when Naruto was about to rip the seal off, his father appeared, explaining to Naruto the situation. Nagato... I'm learning of what happened um, before Naruto explains to Nagato what happened that night. Saying the night that the masked man attacked, the, the Naruto's attack was created by that masked man who used the QB to attack his mother. And Naruto says, seeing as how he can see Nagato, who Nagato is, he's obviously related to his mother. As his father gave him a description and says that her last name was Uzumaki. Then shocked Nagato. He had other family members out there. Those within Konoha. He didn't even know. Now he thought Uzumaki was just a name given to Naruto. He didn't know that Naruto was related to him. Naruto would say that my mother was attacked that night. Because she was the Jichuriki of the Nine Tails. Attacked by that same masked man. Before telling Nagato what he really worked for such a man. Who would kill innocent children. Before damning an entire boy's life to hell. Just because. Just over power. To attack a single village with a bijou. He may not be. He may not be happy with having the nine tails. But thanks to it. He survived a lot of the battles he's been. I really don't know what to go from here. So one's wrapping up his speech to Nakato. Now, I'm not saying he's going to be able to convince him, but he will be able to break through to Nagato. So when the masked man would appear, Nagato would use the remaining, uh, would use some of his chakra to use the, bring the man into a bench or tinning before sticking him with a bunch of chakra rods as he do something surprisingly. As he told Jirai, as he told Naruto that he'll bring back their sensei. As he does the um, Rene Rebirth technique on Jiraiya. As Jiraiya did die, as Naruto didn't even notice because he was talking to Nagato. As Kona, Naruto sees and Kona sees Nagato's body turn hair turn white, and his last words, he told Konoha, Kona to go with him to Konoha to take his body because as soon as his chakra ran out within those rods, that masked man would be able to move. Right now, he's sustaining. He's suppressing his own ability to um, go intangible. They have hours at most. It wouldn't be until they hear a calling noise and Naruto would turn around to see a black, um, a hawk to see that lands on his shoulder, telling them of what had happened through the um, Sasuke. Um, I think it was the um, it was the retrieval mission for Sasuke once, um, when they had uh, during his fight with the um, with Itachi. Because now Naruto was no longer there. They're not since Naruto was not there, what will they do? Well, since Naruto wasn't there, they you no know, there were still no casualties. Even if Naruto was there, there would have been no casualties. But now that Naruto is there, what changes? Isn't there what what changes? Really nothing much. They still don't come close to bringing Sasuke back. So it really doesn't matter. I should really move on from this point. Eventually, Jiraiya will begin to gain life. Naruto would tell Jiraiya, he actually didn't even know he died. So before Jiraiya would say, you know, Naruto, sometimes I really hate you. As Naruto would tell Jiraiya he, um, that his student died, before Jiraiya would tell Conan to wait, before telling Conan that he needs something. She goes to Nagato's body before taking out the Rinnegan, as Nagato had already passed. Taking his Renegon before destroying them, causing Toby, who's watching, to scream internally, cursing Jiraiya for doing such a thing. She told him that if. 
All right. So <clears throat> after managing to convince Payne and leaving with um Payne's body along with Jiraiya destroying the Rinnegan, Conan and Conan and Jiraiya head back to um Konoha, leaving Rain as and well as you can see in the in the anime, when I really looked was looking at this fight, it happened in Rain. Yet Rain looks like in essence it really looked like it was abandoned in the area in which they fought. So I wasn't really sure. But they would Conan would leave Rain with this. As is her and Nagato had used <clears throat> As is her and Nagato had in essence um you know been the Kage of this village, the leaders. But now like without Nagato what was there to this village? Like they really did bring a lot, especially to the the Akatsuki to this village. And Madara would be able to find her had she ever stayed back. She knew she couldn't have trust uh, Madara. Even Yahiko told her that, but yet they did. Now she knew she was no longer safe with Rain. She would actually go to Konoha because Madara made an attempt a lot earlier than what he would. So we're gonna go cut back to Madara. We see Zetsu now appear, telling him this can't be. As Zetsu tells the other Zetsu to procure the item that they need. As in another white, a full white Zetsu would appear from the ground, handing them something. It was a needle, a chakra needle. Now, what this needle does is it's essentially like a metal needle that absorbs chakra. It allows them to siphon chakra. So siphoning the chakra of the destroyer Renegon into, into a syringe, they would bring out Madras. <clears throat> they would tell T Madara that it's now time. Bringing out a Renegon to that of a close relative. These are Izuna's original eyes. These are Izuna's eyes. So now they bring out Madara's original eyes. So you're using Madara's eyes, um, bringing Madara, uh, bringing out Madara's eyes and things like that. But one of them was it was one of Izuna's original eyes. I forgot. Madara did use one in the Izanagi, and the, that's the one he died with in his eye socket. That's the one that was in his eye. If you really think about it, it was Izuna's eyes and having. As he transplanted his own eye, original eyes back within his body. Because he would no longer be fighting and using them for a while. For a very long time. So yeah. So they would get the eye before injecting Eon Madara's last eye. With some of the chakra from the Renegon. Causing it to morph as it recognizes Madara's chakra within it. The eye would morph into that of a Renegon. This is the only failsafe I really have. It's another only way I could think of. Toby acquiring another Renegon to start the Fourth Great Shinobi War. Toby would tell Zetsu to procure that eye and to keep it safe. And to find another suitable eye transplant for the for the rest of that chakra. So they would have to go through the eyes to see which one has the closest relative match to it. And it wouldn't be until later that they'll find it out. So yeah, <clears throat> so now we cut to what's next. So since now, not, since Naruto helped Jiraiya take care of Naruto a lot earlier, and since, um, well yeah, that's really, and Jiraiya didn't die, we can really completely skip the pain of Soul Dark. Now does this mean Naruto's not, now the Sage Mode Dream will not be extended to Naruto. As I've already shown, Naruto is now a, has been a Master Sage user, since you two Master. The reason why I had Naruto learn this was to really boost Toshinori's baseline over um literally baseline strength, along with making his hits somewhat impossible to dodge now. As not only would you have to worry about the wind pressure, but you would also have to worry about the hit coming from using Senjutsu. It was a pretty broken ability, if you really were to look at it from a certain standpoint. Um So let's let's continue. Now, with there no longer being a, an assault, but there will still be a five Kage summit, and this is why. See, Obito before he came, um, before, um, after Zetsu removed the chakra rods, would go to meet Sasuke, retrieving him from the um tower, and revealing him the the truth to him. Now, Obito could feel anger in Toby's voice and wonders what that's about. And he would even reveal to Sasuke of Naruto's defeat of pain. The leader, the so-called leader of the Akatsuki, one of their strongest, the second strongest member behind himself. Foretelling Sasuke, um, 
Well, I, you know, obviously, he just told Sasuke the truth. And over time, Sasuke would learn of the truth. And we get into the five Kage Summit that Sasuke will still go on to attack the eight tails. So now within the five Kage Summit, Naruto would actually head there with Tsunade along with Jiraiya. Naruto would be one of her guards as the other two, two of the only few Senjutsu users within Kona, within that of the ninja world. So as far as we know so yet, yeah, we do know that eventually Kabuto will come out a, as a sage user, Senjutsu user. Which, to be honest, I believe is just an incomplete version of Sage since you know, Snake Sage mode because we've seen a complete Snake Sage and Mitsuki and not even has its initial states. So I'm I'm just really confused on what Kabuto is actually a Sage of because yeah, I know he calls it something to do. I think it was like Dragon Sage mode or something like that. We've never seen a Dragon Summon, so I'm just, you know, or have we? I've already watched the recent episodes of Boruto or read the new Sasuke side manga. Oh well. Um, that's not the point. We're, I need to move on. So, um, while at the Five Kage Summit, Sasuke um would be there to um to attack Tsunade because well she is the acting Hokage, which means that she had to have some knowledge of the yeah, um the mission of Itachi and still did not say anything nor pardon his brother, and then after that he's going to go and attack Konoha. For Donzo and the other two elders. We all know Sasuke didn't get a chance to go attack the other two elders due to the fact is that he overuses Mangekyo and there's a battle against Donzo. Because he I mean, well, he didn't just come from it, but he had recently fought Killer B. That was literally I I'm just saying Killer B really didn't have to do Sasuke like that. But yeah. Uh so when Sasuke would arrive, Sasuke had just cut through many samurai along with the outer edge um, of Echelon's so sh shinobi guards. Now, in the Baikage room, he had cut down all their flags or whatever those things are above them, having them fall to the ground. Now, until already knowing where Sasuke is, just looks up. Sasuke is surprised that Naruto already knew he was there. No one had to tell Naruto anything. This suspicious regret, Naruto was a sensor name. As Naruto watches the Aether right Kage would go to attack, Tsunade would wonder what Sasuke doing here. Before Naruto would say that Sasuke has a lot of malicious intent and it's directed mostly at you and me. So he must be either after both of us or just you or me or just me. Is it one of us or both of us? Tsunade would not before telling Gar that she's going to be heading out and him and her and Naruto are going to be heading out just in case Sasuke is attacking the Five Kage Summit for just them two, for either of them. With Gar and she says to try, she says to try and uh, protect the others. And she tells the right to stay behind just in case, but she wants Sasuke to attack to at least follow them out, so not to kill him. So Tsunade and Naruto, Naruto grabs a hold of Tsunade and takes off, leaving only yellow lightning right where he was. It's not like a speedster, but, you know, in a sense, it's someone like that. Sasuke, seeing them leave, would begin to follow, only to be attacked by Aether Raikage. But surprising to A, Gaara's sand had protected Sasuke. A looked at Gaara before Gaara would shake his head, before saying that Konoha is about to handle Sasuke right here and now. They would want to go chase after, but Garo would say now it's not the time for them. So just wait for them to come back. Now right here is actually where another person would make himself known from the shadows. It was Donzo. He had been watching them. He was planning on manipulating um, all the five Kage in hopes of defeating and killing Tsunade and Naruto along with Jiraiya. Seeing the um, elder there, Don, uh, Jiraiya angered as Donzo, how dare he come here, but he was just an elder. A retiring one at that. Donzo, who had now had his Sharingan revealed, would be about to attack, only for Shigetsu to appear and says, So you're that Donzo guy, huh? The one Sasuke's looking for. Before using a double finger blast, uh, water, that water pistol technique he used. Um, against, um, with a double finger against Donzo. As he knew it wouldn't, he knew, uh, he could sense Donzo's, um, had multiple track. Well, he could see the other, uh, on in Donzo's eyes, which means that he either put him under a genjutsu, 
that something will be happening, or he sucks it to you. He was surprised to see Donzo literally fizz out of reality before fizzing somewhere else. As Donzo would say that he needs them to kill the five Kage. He needs them to kill Tsunade and Naruto, along with Jiraiya. But Jiraiya, who had now entered stage mode by this point upon calling upon Ma and Pa, who had been prepared and ready for anything, had um upon learning of this, because, you know, these meetings don't really, prob they probably don't really go too well. But I'm going to have Jiraiya be prepared for something like this. And they do know that one of the reasons why this meeting was called was because Sasuke attacked the Eight Tails. So, yeah. <clears throat> This means Sasuke is a part of the Akatsuki. It wouldn't even be until while Donzo was about to cast it, um, the Koto Matsukami that Obito would appear, or Madara. He would appear only to stab Donzo in the back with a chakra rod. Ridden gone hidden behind his eye because he doesn't want anyone to know, um, behind the orange mask because he doesn't want anyone to know. It would be during this time that Madara would go on to tell them to hand over the Jinchuriki, where they'd all disagree, at, especially at the B, um, A, after learning that B was still alive, before Madara would say, well then. Seeing as I don't have much time, I'm, and I won't be coming back here, I hereby declare the fourth great shinobi war. Now let's cut to Naruto and Tsunade. Sasuke had just appeared, before telling Naruto that he'll kill him later, but he's still for, for Tsunade. Naruto asks, why is he here? Before Sasuke would reveal the truth to him about Itachi. Naruto would look at Tsunade. Toshinori would look at Tsunade, asking, did she know about this? Tsunade would say she didn't She didn't know until after Sasuke had left. But she wasn't going to party Itachi because whether or not it was a mission, he'd still be going on to do criminal activities. After the fact of which he massacred the, um, the Chia clan. And she couldn't, wouldn't be able to bring him back within Konoha without causing problems throughout the entirety of the nation. And since Sasuke was gone, she wouldn't be able to tell him the truth. Especially not now that he had, um, you know, since went to a traitor to their village. Sasuke anger would manifest to Tsunano as he'd go to in, um, launch a bow at, uh, an arrow, not launch a bow, launch an arrow at Tsunade. But surprising to Sasuke, Naruto literally punched the arrow and clashed with it. Sending it um, literally flying out of the way. Naruto didn't seem to be a bit tired nor damaged from the attack. As he see this yellow lightning around Naruto that he gotten too familiar with. As Naruto tells Sasuke now is not the time for this. Before dispelling a clone of his. Again, Jiraiya was prepared for the worst to happen. So, he did have Naruto send out a clone to learn to gather some Jutsu Chakra. Sasuke would watch as Naruto's eyes would go um, from into normal, like, blue to a sort of yellowish-orange with, well, not a yellowish-orange. Orange is yellow. It's more precise because it's more yellow than it's, it's orange. Or it's, it's just probably just yellow with a bar-like slit in his eyes going, what is it? I think, is that vertical? No. Vertical is up. Horizontal is sideways. A horizontal like bar in his eyes, bar like pupil. I'm not really good with that. I really couldn't. I'm also look, he's kind of stupid, don't blame me though. But, um, <clears throat> Naruto had just entered his, his sage mode. As Sasuke would say, So, you put on some eyeliner. You think I care? As he began rushing towards Naruto, Chidori in hand. As he as he got close, he knew he wouldn't be able to land a blow, so he'd send out an attack. Chidori uh, Spear. He'd send that attack out at Naruto. Only for Naruto to literally enhance his hand with wind to, like, place out two fingers, a technique he had learned while actually visiting Suno once with Jiraiya. Naruto had created a wind blade. And it was combating Sasuke's Shidori's true spear. Now you may ask, what are you talking about? Can that actually do that? Yes. Um Lightning Chakra is weak to wind chakra. Wind chakra is weak to fire chakra. Fire chakra is weak to water. Which actually, to be honest, I really think that Naruto as a to be a true rival of Sasuke should have had two opposing elements to it. 
chill while Ch- Naruto's lightning, um, Sasuke's lightning is strong to Naruto's wind. Finn is weak to Naruto's wind. Sasuke's fire is strong to Naruto's um, wind. Um, wind. And Naruto's water would have water, which would be strong to Naruto's to Sasuke's fire, yet weak to his lightning. You see what I'm saying? They, like, they could have did like a whole thing with that. But actually, I think it's like um, lightning is weak to earth. I think that's what it was. But you know, like water conducts electricity. I'm just saying. That's how I said the water thing, but oh well. So I'm, I'm just saying that I got really appreciate it. Naruto having that, and like have like a rivalry of elements also. But oh well. Um, that, that's not the point. So Nar Sasuke seeing Naruto had blocked his Chidori spear. Would rush um would get closer to Naruto as the spear's length shortens. Until Sasuke was close enough to make it into a normal Chidori. As he go to slice Naruto, but Naruto who had coated his entire hand in wind chakra and sharpening it around his hand had literally um it didn't make a sound of clashing blades, but you could see the two elements clashing off of each other when not when they crossed. Sasuke was surprised as Naruto says, you know. I came up with this technique because I knew I had to combat your Chidori one day. This technique is essentially like the wind blade is up on a much larger scale. While I can't extend the link wind blade out like you do your Chidori spear, I can also coat my entire arm with a sharpened wind chakra. You like it? I don't know what to call it yet. <laughs> but it's a pretty good technique, isn't it, Sasuke? Sasuke would be angered with Naruto as he rushed towards him. If um as he um um like getting his bounce would rush towards Naruto before Sin he got a kick. But Naruto grabbed his kick. Naruto will say Sasuke. Now we both know that I'm physically stronger. Before throwing Sasuke into one of the pillars. Only for Sasuke to come out with a Susano around. As he'd use it last minute to cushion his blow. He'd make the Susano and force it to create a sort of sword. As he progressed it beyond that of its skeletal and its um, uh, com- not a, it's not a complete Susano. It's like a um, not the full, for both full body Susanos. I think. <clears throat> I think complete would be the press the best thing. I think that's what it's called, complete Susano. But he would use the blade. He would create a blade with Amaterasu flames on top of it. As Sasuke would rush towards Naruto. Only for Naruto to be surprised when Naruto grabbed the Susano arm. Not the blade, but had sped into it to where he grabbed the arm, stopping the Susano swing. Even though his, like, like, like having his arm, not grabbed it, he couldn't grab it because it's so big. Pause. He would be able to block it, keeping it from moving, and continues to, and continuing its swing before delivering a devastating punch to the Susano, cracking it. As his hand continues to go through, he would eventually reach Sasuke, sending Sasuke along with Susano back. It was an enhanced by Senjutsu, you don't forget that. So this is a much more empo- um, empowered punch. Before Naruto would appear behind Sasuke, lightning flickering all around his body. As Naruto would deliver a devastating elbow to the back of the Susano. As Sasuke would be very surprised at this. Naruto could damage to Susano. No one Susano is supposed to be the ultimate defense. Only for Naruto to appear un, um as he had knocked the Susano back, only for him a clone to manifest under Sasuke, kicking him into the air as he's continuing like going forward. Only for Naruto to appear and to deliver a Detroit smash to the Susano. Sending it Barreling down back into this bridge sort of area that they are at. As soon Naruto begins to be, breathe a little bit heavier, Naruto will tell Sasuke, This is enough, Sasuke. Yes, your clan was massacred. Yes, it was on an order. So what? From what I'm learning, your clan was planning to do a coup. Itachi killing them was the best idea. Could he have spared more children and those who were innocent? Yes. But we both know Itachi wasn't strong enough to kill an entire clan by himself. 
And it's Naruto with a rush towards Sasuke. Sasuke towards Naruto. Using N, um, Susano sort of, um, enhanced, um, Amaterasu enhanced Susano blade to swing at Naruto. Only for Naruto to sense it coming, only for him to spin in the air, causing him to build up a sort of whirlwind or a tornado around his body as it kind of knocks the Susano's sword off, off, um, course. As Naruto continues to spin, he places his two arms out, creating a two, um, a two-sided drill. So one side is spinning really fast and the other is two. This is because of one for all and him spinning in the air. As they both took off at great, as Naruto took off at a great speed. As Naruto drilled into the Susano, sending, sending the Susano and Sasuke crashing back as he continues to drill into it. Sasuke, whose eyes had been, begin to dull over time begin to truly feel the effects of the Sharingan. As Tsunade eventually appears behind Sasuke. As Naruto jumps um jumps back as she sends the Susano towards Naruto. And he gets his, and for a little bit, like for like a couple seconds, play uh what is it? Volleyball? I think that's what you would call it. By with their punches within the Susano. Sending it back and forth every time. Until Naruto made a clone and on, um, made three two clones. One would appear next to Tsunade, and one beside himself. As Naruto, Tsunade, and the two clones would all empower as much strength into their body as they could before delivering four punches to the Shisano, devastatingly crushing it. Sasuke was surprised as he had been, in essence, defeated. As his eyes had begun, he began to see more, it began to become more blurry as he was trying to strengthen his Susano from the attack. As Sasuke sent it to a mountain, knowing that the mountain was about to collapse on him, as he could not longer, no longer activate his Susano, Sasuke was ready, prepared for death, only for a moderate to appear before telling Sasuke now is not the time. But Naruto seeing this would want to would rush there, but Madara would already be gone. Damn it. It wouldn't be until the other five Kage appear that um <clears throat> that Tsunade and Naruto learn of Donzo and his treachery. Sorry, I had to sneeze. Um, so yeah. Once learning about Don- what Donzo was planning, Tsunade was quite angered. But they found out that Donzo um, man also stole a Shisui Sharingan. But that a masked man had appeared and had stabbed Donzo with some sort of black rod. And Donzo cursed about not being able to use Izanagi because of the chakra in the rod. As he ripped out Shisui Sharingan. Only for Donzo to create some sort of black ink-like trap from his body. This did happen after we cut to Naruto Tsunade. I said Tsunade. Tsunade. I think I did say that. But anyways, before delivering the much more devastating news, they now had to prepare for war as Madara had declared the fourth great shinobi war. Naruto was saddened that, uh, or Toshinori was more saddened that war was coming, but he would have to fight it. He would fight it to bring peace in the ninja world. Before A would tell them of the five nations banding together to fight the Akatsuki. But what's left of them? As Naruto and Tsunade and I, before Aishas, they also came to a consensus about Naruto and it B, telling Naruto that he'll be sent to a special island to train, island to train and using his Biju chakra to the fullest. Though Shinori would not. As we cut to the day that he departs, departing with Yamato um, and Guy. He would eventually make it to the Turtle Island, the island that the, that's on the giant turtle, where he'd come in contact with Killer B, taking, in, I think it was roll call of the strange animals of the island. Eventually, with B, they'd make it to, I think it was called the Waterfall of Truth, where Toshinori would have to face his darkness. But you see, the thing is weird with his darkness. Now, this darkness belongs to the body of Naruto, but Toshinori's soul is where one for all comes in contact. So, it does not have access to one for all. It does have access to Naruto, babe, Toshinori's ability to increase his strength with chakra like Tsunade, but not one for all, because that comes from Toshinori's soul rather than being reincarnated, rather than Naruto's body in general. 
So it's not a replica of Toshinori. It's a replica of Naruto. Now the trading Toshinori is done without one for all. So all of that is what this this person had, what this evil half of Naruto has, not what um, Toshinori does. So Naruto Toshinori is actually relatively able to defeat it, but eventually comes to the um comes to the conclusion that he needs to accept his own hatred and does so, becoming one with it. Toshinori eventually heads into the waterfall where he began to um, go into that place where he'd have to find a switch and they would enter the hidden room where he began training to uh, to um, master his Bijou. Now Toshinori would eventually enter into the Nine Tails, um, into the Mindscape as he come to the Nine Tails as All Might, not to Naruto as a Maki, but Toshinori. As t the Nine Tails says, so young. <clears throat> so, what is your name? Toshinori, I believe. Are you prepared to take... <clears throat> are you, have you come here to take my power? As Toshinori would say, sadly, I have. I truly wish not to take it from you forcefully. But this seems to be the only way. The Nine Tails would say, then, remove the, remove the seal, and we shall see if you can take it from me. Now, Naruto is currently sitting still in his room, would begin to feed off the Senjutsu, the nature chakra coming out of Yamato's wood style. But Yamato would begin to um, literally um, infuse it with more wood chakra, release chakra, as Naruto entered stage mode. As he ripped the seal, used the seal that he had been given to remove the seal. Jiraiya, who's currently with Tsunade, are now is fighting him on a forefront of battle what well, was with Tsunade actually so yeah <clears throat> no 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 he won't be with Tsunade I need him somewhere on the battlefield because of the fact is yeah because of the fact is how would he escape the tenth of bomb I really don't want Dry to die to be honest this is why I kept him alive for so long anyways Jiraiya um, Naruto would open the cage and the nine tails would come out the Nine Tails would go to launch an attack at Naruto, launching a um, Bijou bomb. But Naruto would, um, using one for all, would send an attack that would actually send the Bijou bomb back at Kurama. Only for Kurama to use one of his tails to bat it up into the ceiling as it explodes. Surprised um, that Naruto could do so, well, that this person could still do so. He was even more surprised when a bunch of Shadow Clones appeared, all infused with the one for all. Again, I did explain, I think I explained this ability. He doesn't split one for all equally amongst the clones. The clones all have the same amount of one for all within him as Toshinori does. So they're just as physically strong. And it does not take less. It, it's like they're on their own, their own separate person. But when he reabsorbs them, he doesn't get more one for all. That's really what it does. Unlike chakra, it doesn't split like chakra. It's just there, and they have it. So they would all launch a Ras. Um, they would um Toshinori now having the Rasengan in his hand with his all of his clones who are now in stage mode and infusing it with one for all his energy. As the um the Rasengan begins to turn a golden, like a bright yellowish color from the attack, and begins to emit lightning. You know, signifying the use of one for all infused within it. They all rush towards the Nine Tails, winning a sort of um, Naruto Uzumaki Rasengan barrage, um, that ultimate barrage attack that he used against the Nine Tails and, and Kane. As they continue to fight the Nine Tails, Naruto, Naruto continues to fight the Nine Tails. Eventually, B would make it in, uh, but with the Eight Tails would make it in as the Eight Tails launches a Bijou bomb of its own. The Kurama tells him to stay out of this. Okay, so I'm not sure how far we got, so I'll recap. I don't want Jiraiya to die. Okay, I'm going to stay there right now, so he won't be at the Ten Tails, um, at the HQ that they took up 45 Kage, 45, um, for Tsunade and A to be there. He won't be there. But wait, wait, doesn't that mean Mabui is, hold up, is she confirmed dead or alive? I'm not really sure. Okay, so yeah, I was just trying to see um, whether or not Mama was there. Because I remembered her, and I was like, yo, what, did she die? Nah, yeah, she died. She died. She did. <laughs> but I'm going to recap. I don't want Dryer to die, okay? So I'm not going to have him be there. 
So as Naruto continues to battle the Eight Tails, Jiraiya, and everyone else is going into war. Could not battling the Eight Tails, battling the Nine Tails. Naruto continues into war. It wouldn't be until Naruto uh, or Toshinori had managed to weaken the Nine Tails just enough for him to be able to get a great pool of chakra from him. That Naruto and Kurama will begin to have tug of war for his chakra. I mean, when I mean like great pool, I mean P U L L pool, like a great pool, like that. A big pool. I don't think he, I know it was a big push, but not a pool. You know what I'm saying? I don't really know. Um, so he would grab a lot of Kurama's chakra and begin um, ripping it out, grabbing more of the nine, um, making more as more shadow clones appear. They go to attack the nine tails. The Nine Tails began to envelop Naruto in its own chakra, beginning to somewhat corrupt Naruto. But Naruto, uh, Toshinori would begin to battle his own hatred. So far to where it did Nine Tails chakra on the outside, it only be able, be able to form two tails. But while his clones were attacking, the time seemed to have stopped. As Naruto, Toshinori looked around only to see a red-haired woman in front of him, asking where was her son. As Toshinori would explain that he is her son, just that um, when Naruto was born, when well, when he was he was reincarnated, and Naruto is a reincarnation of him, so he is his her son, who's in control of the body. So he is her son. Because you know, find it very weird, but we're going to explain things to Naruto to Toshinori. Toshinori would tell her that she already knew that she was his mother. That when he had first been born, he was conscious and could see and hear everything. So he knew what she said. Kishino was happy to hear that her son heard what she said. But a bit weirded out with the whole reincarnation sort of thing. As Kishina tells Toshinori, does he really want to an explanation of how they got together? Of how her father met? Does Toshinori would say he would love to hear that? But if he she's anything like her father, like his father, then that means she only has a limited amount of chakra. Before telling her to at least save that chakra, so that he can talk to her on later, later date, or a bit later, because right now he's you know fighting the nine tails. Kashina will say, "Then why not me? Let me help you." As Toshino will say, "No, he want. I want to do this all on my own." Now I know Naruto only defeated the nine tails in canon due to help with Kashina and the eight tails. Along with his own major power, but the nine Kishina was really holding down the nine tails really was a lot. So as Toshinori would blink, he noticed that he's back with fighting the nine tails. As many more clones appeared, as they grabbed Kurama's all his nine tails before swinging him around. Besides the one that was not Toa's, um, but, well, yeah, before throwing him farther away from Naruto. As he did so, Kurama's chakra was separated from him, leaving him a sort of um, what seems to be a, what is it called? Not an anorexic fox, but a uh, severe, severely, um, what is it? Starved. <laughs> he looks severely starved because of his chakra being gone. As the chakra begins to develop Toshinori, Toshinori thanks the Nine Tails before telling the Nine Tails here. Nine Tails will be surprised. And Nine Tails told Toshinori that he will give him access back to his chakra. But this was necessary. He told the Nine Tails he hoped they could work together to become partners, but he don't he doesn't want to use it unless necessary. Toshinori and uh, the Nine Tails give a small nod, with anger still on his face, before wondering, could this boy be the man that his father wants to talk about? Could this man be the person that his father talk, told him about? <clears throat> Eventually, Toshinori would enter into that mind state again where he meet Kushina and they talk about how his parents met and everything, even getting to a bit into Kushina's backstory. As Kushina would eventually fail, Toshinori would let out a tear before coming back to the real world, where, he's, where he'd enter Kurama's chakra mode as he felt a second, a third energy signature besides the um, Samehara. Besides the Samahara, he felt two other human like chakra signatures and had felt Kisame. Would actually be the Kisame who could sense Naruto was the, um had tried to get him. So she knew he was still in the Naruto's chakra state as he forgot to turn it off to get out to exit it. He had sort of overshot and missed 
some um Miss Kisame as he eventually came out of the waterfall of truth, stick, making God think that he was his true self. Before their battle would ensue. But with the help of Naruto, Naruto um and Guy would be able to take him out quite easily. But Kisame would still be able to get the note sent out. Would be able to get the um would be able to get the what is it called? The information sent out to Kabuto. So as this happens, eventually Naruto, who would be who had now now noticed his surroundings, would begin to sense out as he began to sense the entirety of the war before he tell B that they need to go now. As Iruka appears tr and tries to um, keep Naruto there, but Toshinori breaks out of it easily before telling Iruka that he was sorry, but this needs to happen. As Naruto takes off, he eventually makes it towards the area of battle where they begin to break through barriers with B, as B has still had the same talk with Iruka about protecting Naruto. It wouldn't be until they get to the final barrier that they encounter the uh, Raikage along with Tsunade. As they begin to try and talk Naruto sense to Naruto. As Naruto began to speed around, B noticed Naruto's strength and speed was speed was similar to that of his own brother. And his strength was also. So he was really confused about how could Naruto be this strong? What was his what where did this strength come from? As yellow lightning met blue lightning as they continued to clash until Naruto would eventually be able to make it past A faster than A could even move. B was severely surprised. Now, this is why I'm going to make a statement. Naruto, now due to his trochino, now due to his intense training over the years, along with his training with Jiraiya, is incredibly fast. I'm not going to downplay that. He's incredibly fast, and with the speed one for all gives him in full cowling, is even more. Now, base Naruto, it had to be fast because KCO one got Naruto from a speed that was probably far, I mean, far less than A's lightning speed, which moves at a third of the speed of light, if I'm not mistaken, to being able to outspeed that. Now, he's nowhere near as fast as Minato was because Minato's Hiraishin, I think it's said that Minato's Hiraishin makes him move at the speed of light. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying. His reaction, Minato's baseline speed should be faster than A's on Lightning Larian, which moves, you know, a third of the speed of lightning. Well, I mean, a third of the speed of light. So, yeah. Anyways, Naruto giving pass, A would give his blessing. As Tsunade didn't have to step in this time. As Naruto and them would head off, Naruto would eventually, uh, Toshinori would eventually make a bunch of Shadow Clones, forcing them to go to the different battlefields. Now, I'm not going to focus on the Shadow Clones because there'll be so much to cover. I'm going to focus on the original Naruto. So, as they continued on, Naruto um, and B eventually came across Nagato and Kitachi. As Kitachi asked Naruto, what about Sasuke, before Naruto would explain the situation. As Kabuto had found them, Kabuto forced them to be in the fight. But Naruto was really holding his, was doing really well against Itachi. As Itachi noticed, Naruto was had a flux of chakra that seemed to be around the air. So he couldn't place Naruto into a genjutsu as that chakra within the air was constantly battling his own. So it wasn't, he was not able to place Naruto into genjutsu. It's not like he would have been able to do normally. It wouldn't be until Naruto, while fighting Itachi, that a crow would come out of Naruto's mouth. Now, yes, while Naruto did not meet Itachi, this goes back to the Kasakake rescue mission. Now, Naruto did begin an immediate battle with Itachi, but Itachi was a when I get like I said, he was not able to um, come in contact with Naruto. Now, there's one thing I didn't go over. Now, Itachi knew Naruto would more than likely be strong enough to defeat his clone really quickly. Quick, too quick for him to not be able to place the crow that he needed within Naruto. So what he did was was he had actually appeared where the area which they had where Naruto had been, and for a brief second, as Naruto was looking around with his senses, had actually caught Naruto off guard and placing him in the Genjutsu. And since it only lasts a second, it wouldn't be the Genjutsu would be quick enough for no one else to notice. As that time, Naruto was beginning to build up anger. And everything, so everyone was conscious of him, um, you know, 
stopping and as he began to be more angered by the event. And yes, Itachi is more literally just for plot. I'm just going to cut it short. It's for plot. So Itachi would be released of the Edo Tensei's control over him and would go off to battle. You know, would go on to help Naruto and um, be battle Nagato. But to be honest, Naruto could have battled Nagato on his own, but sealing him would have been a different matter. And this is where Itachi seals B, I'm uh, not B, Nagato with the Totsuka Blade as he goes on to fight Kabuto. Now, as Naruto will eventually make it to the battlefield, he eventually comes across Kakashi and um, Guy as they begin to battle the six BG, the six Jinchurikis beside, but that's not Gar because Gar's Biju wasn't taken in this can in this story. So Gar does still have Shukaku. So, with Gara now, I know I did say the remaining two earlier, but I did remember, I do, do just now remember that I didn't have them take Gara as Shikaku. This is my first What If recording that I've came back, from me coming back to What Ifs. This is the first recording, so please don't get on me. Anyways, as they continue the battle, uh, Naruto actually shows relative ease with battling the other Jinchuriki, but it does when they go into full Biju state, it does push Naruto into going into KCM. But seeing as how he can barely manage this state, Kurama decides to step in. As he began contemplating not over um his thoughts with Naruto, they decide to bump fist as Naruto couldn't protect Kakashi and Guy. As the other eight Biju, um, uh, eight, the other, I think it was like six, um, yes, yeah, the other six because Gar and Shikaku, the other six, um, tell beasts had, tra they transformed into their tell beasts and began to fight, um, Naruto and B along with Kakashi and Guy actually who stepped in into this battle as they would not, Guy, Kakashi and Guy would not let Naruto talk them out of this. So they would fight alongside them and when they transformed, Naruto knew he'd have to enter the Nine Tails state, but when he couldn't manifest the Nine Tails, like B could transform into the Eight Tails, he was a bit confused by it. Until Kurama told him what they would have to do, they would have to synchronize their chakra. Now, eventually, they would come to an agreement. They would decide to work as partners from here on out throughout this war. As they bump fists, Naruto releases the gate. As a certain surge of chakra, Toshinori is enveloped with the Nine Tails egg new cloak. As he transforms into a giant knight of beast, as with him and the eight tails combined, actually, they completely overpower the other eight bijus, tail beast bomb, and actually send the attacks at them, reflecting back at them. Hold up. I believe I last left off with Naruto. I was. <clears throat> Anyways, I was saying something. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, so I believe I last left off with Naruto finally linking, or Toshinori finally linking with Kurama. And now after linking, he would battle him and the Eight Tails would actually combine a Bijou bomb in hopes of not uh, taking out the other Bijous, not killing them, but taking them out of the equation. And when it explodes, it does harm the Bijous, but Obito sees this knowing that they could break free with them being so weakened as the chains are only as strong as the Bijous. He decides to steal them back within the ghetto Maza. As he goes to as he goes to combat Naruto, Naruto's speed is something that not even Obito would be able to keep up with at this point. He's now entered into a whole new range of speed with KCM2, and he hasn't even stacked Sage Mode onto it. So you know it's something completely different. Now, um, now Naruto does, Toshinori does have a bit of a hard time due to his quirk as he remarks that it's similar to that of Mirio's, but unlike Mirio's, he doesn't have to come out for air. It wouldn't be until Kakashi um, would notice something different about um, this, about this man's eye and everything that they would eventually come to make a plan. That plan would be to break his mask by Kakashi sending his, um, his Rasengan or a one for all infused punch into that of, well, a one-for-all, um, a clone using a one-for-all punch into Obito, into the Kami dimension, where it actually lands the punch, shattering his mask and also kind of breaking his face, which heals. But yes, you do see that Obito's face when it the dust clears from the attack. Kakashi is shocked to find out that it's his old, um, his old teammate, 
that he thought had died that he thought he would have been honoring this whole time. But turns out he was very much alive. Kakashi would ask Oito if he was alive, why didn't he come back? As Oito would go on about the world and how Rin was not supposed to have died. Kakashi could not keep his promise. But no, Toshinori wouldn't let Obito get down on Kakashi. So him and Guy together would begin going as far as they could with Obito. At this point, Madara, I believe at this time, Madara should be fighting the five Kage. So it should be heading towards them. It wouldn't be until he would eventually land after Naruto and Guy is having a hard time hitting him because of Kamui. That Nar that Kakashi uh, <clears throat> not Kakashi. That Naruto um learns that this well that Naruto really begins to take things seriously. That he begins to ask Kurama. Hey Kurama. As the Nine Tails says, what? Well now he says hey Nine Tails. He hasn't yet learned his name yet. Nine Tails hasn't yet told him as he was not swallowed by uh, the Gyuki and uh, by uh, not Gyuki, um, by what was his name? See, Goku. He was a swallowed by Son Goku. Pause. And um, no, forget the pause. I ain't scared. Take it how you want it. We all seen the anime if you're watching this or read the manga. There's no reason to pause. Anyways, he um, Naruto never comes to the confirmation that Tell Beast have names. He would say nine tails. As Kurama would say, we're partners now, Naruto, or Toshinori, or whatever your name is. I have a name. Huh. This is the first time I've ever heard of it. I heard anything about this. Yeah, because you were not worthy. What may be your name? My name is Kurama. Okay, then, Kurama. Quick question. Can we combine Sage Mode with, Bijou, with my Bijou Mode? I stage more with detail B state. As Corona says, yes, they can actually. So, while they're while Naruto, be, um, Kurama and Naruto together begin gathering Senjutsu chakra. Naruto, um, Mod um Obito, not Madara. Madara is facing both Guy and Kakashi. Is really holding them off. Obito decides that the Nine Tails they won't gain the Nine Tails right now. So. <clears throat> what he does is, Mod he summons the king, the, those two jars with the King Kaku brothers in, and feeds it to the ghetto statue, and with that tentacle of the eight tails, which means that the the ten tails, while as powerful as it was when it first showed up, was not at its full strength because not only was it missing a full, like almost, it wasn't missing a full bit of Kurama's chakra, but it was missing a chunk of Kurama's chakra, and missing like. A whole bunch more of Yuki chakra. So this ten tails is a lot. The ten tails was a lot less dangerous than what it could have been, which I would have loved to see it be as dangerous with the Kukaku brothers' chakra reserves of well, of their Kurama's chakra and the Kukaku brothers growing to an extent to where they had in essence a half of each. Each had a half of Kurama's full chakra, which means yin and yang in their body. And when he fed it, you know what I'm saying. I would have loved to see that, but. You know, you, you you get what you get, and I like Naruto as it is, so it could be better. I'm just saying, let's fill it more, um, more, um, more into the mysteries. I would have loved to have solved a lot of the mysteries within Naruto, but oh well. We now see, um, as he summoned them, the tent, the not the tentas, the ghetto mazo begins to shake, releasing a screeching like noise as the ground around them begins to rumble. Madara will smile as eventually the tentas had. Taken form. This is when Naruto would tell Guy that they might have to go all out here. As they Naruto looked and finally noticed Obito's other eye, that was the Renegon. How could he had Dry destroyed it? So how could he have had the Renegon? Naruto asked to Obito about it before Obito says, "Well, since you're going to die in deep anyways." I said, die anyways. Why not? It's the classic bad guy thing to do. You see, we extracted the chakra of Nagato's eyes, the Renegon, and placed them within a Sharingan that was compatible with that chakra, as that Renegon wasn't even originally Nagato's. As he looked at Madara before saying it was his. So we found his original eye, the one eye that he had left. 
and well, let's just say, well, she might say Ben. That's what a bitch not charging, right? <clears throat> Anyways, um, and let's just say that um, how do I say this? We implanted that eye as it had taken on the Renegon's chakra, morphing into that of the Renegon. My drones say so. One of my both of my Renegon were destroyed. Mm, yes, but we do. We might have another way to regain it. Now, at this time, a lot more of the people and the commanders, I mean, and a lot more of the shinobi do begin to show up as Naruto and God begin to go as far as they can with the powers they have now. Naruto being KCM2 and Sage Mode along with One for All, Full Cowling, and Guy with his seventh gate. He's not yet, Naruto told Guy he doesn't want him to die, so the eighth gate is not yet uh, required. That's only a last resort, along with the power of his own. That's a last resort, which will you will see what it is later if I do decide to do it. As I continue into the war, Naruto and Guy are actually Guy's taking on Obito while Naruto's taking on Madara. Madara can't seem to absorb Naruto's power, and with the um, Uchiha reflection technique, is only able to reflect it back at Naruto. But due to Naruto sensing the chakra output of the technique every time, he does seem to be able to dodge it while in Sage Mode, until his Senjutsu Chakra eventually runs out. And Naruto is still relatively fast, probably too fast at this point for Madara to keep up with. His baseline speed is something to not be played with, and that baseline speed with one for all full counting, and then that Sage Mode on it, which gives an even bigger physical boost, which does sort of boost his speed, and then add KCM, and then eventually two, and then Sage Mode with that. That's a whole speed demon right there. Not comparable to Sage Six Pass, um, Naruto in speed, but still fast, fast enough to actually outpace Madara, causing Madara significant damage. Kakashi, seeing this, would try to send Madara and would think about sending Madara into the Kamui dimension, but when he realized it, if Madara was sent into the Kamui dimension, then what would what would it take of Obito to not send Naruto um to not go there and retrieve him himself? And if Obito could bring things into the Kamui dimension, why hasn't he brought the Ten Tails there for to fully mature or anything? As the Ten Tails begins charging, Naruto tells Kurama that they need to hold the Ten Tails off. So Naruto clasps his hands as he um as a chakra arm sprouts and bats Madara away. As a giant nine-tailed fox avatar begins to form with yellow lightning sparkling, well, orange lightning actually due to the yellow and orange and red chakra of the nine tails and the um the red chakra of the nine tails and the yellow lightning of one for all mixing and expanding out. So a one for all enhanced sage, well, who has not yet tapped back into sage mode, but Kisium, um, um Karama avatar it's really strong. It's now. I'm not saying this is enough to close the gap. It does close it, but not. But he's nowhere near. He's still not close enough to the ten tails in strength. So he does be able to. He will be able to land enough that um enough punches um and attacks on the ten tails to cause it significant damage, causing Obito to actually having to absorb it, as everyone joins the war finally as Obito had now appeared. And with Obito taking on the Ten Tails comes the four Kage, Hokages. Now, I didn't introduce them when Madara can because of the fact is Sasuke's beating did take a lot on his body from both Naruto and Tsunade along with his chakra. Even though he had a Susano helping him, he still took a lot of bodily damage, more if more compared to what that of Donzo. So he would have taken at least a bit more time to heal himself up and to go get the Rojimon and all those things. So he only met up with Itachi um, and would have to have taken a while to get to Konoha, where he would um, unseal Orochimaru and everything. Once Team Taka would join him and all those things. So eventually the five, four Hokage appear along with Tsunade and Jiraiya. Minato is happy to see his sensei and his son both alive. Naruto's happy to see his father once again. As they form the five, the um, I, what was it? The I believe it was a four-pointed barrier. I'm not sure. Let me see what it was. I know it was a Hokage-like barrier that took the four of them to perform it. 
It's the four Crimson Ray formation. God dang it. I just put this fixes mode in. It's my remote, guys. Anyways, the four Crimson formation, uh, Ray formation had just been placed around the Ten Tails as they opened the portal. As Naruto with the four, um, the four Kage, four Kages and the five Kage, and the rest of the Shinobi alliance begin to battle, Naruto decides to Put it in the first time. Um, Naruto decides to um, summon Gama, um, a, the Toads, along with Jiraiya, to give as much help. And they even summon the elder Toad, Gama, um, what was his name? Gama Maru. He summons Gama Maru to help in the Battle of the Ten Tails, as Gama Maru could fill the mountains of the Ten Tails, re enter the world. And Gama Maru does guide them into helping. So they have a lot more help in this one due to the think the um the thinking of Jiraiya and Naruto or Toshinori than what they would in canon. I need to get this word over with. So yeah. <clears throat> As with Sasuke, Sasuke seeing this decides to summon Iota and Sakura Katsuyu. I think that's how you say her name. And um Sasuke summons his Susano to help in the battle as Naruto has now formed his QB avatar. So Jiraiya summoned Gamma Bunta. Naruto, with the help of the QB, summoned Gamma Ken, Gamma Hero. I mean, not, uh, yeah, Gamma Hero, or you just get Gamma Shiro. It's one of those. And Gamma Kichi. And uh, Gamma, um, Gamma Tatsu, who, while not as a battle toad, we have never really seen Gamma Tatsu truly battle someone. But I think Gamabuta in his time would have been able to get him to actually fight properly, to learn to um, have the will to fight and do it, do it well enough. So when we seeing when us seeing this now, this elite team of summons, bijus, Kage, all these ninjas would actually begin to overwhelm Obito, who had already entered his six pass stage, his six pass or his ten tails in Cherokee State. Because Senjutsu is one of its only counters to him. And with all these Senjutsu enhanced animals, which does include Iota, due to the fact that, you know, he's a summon, I believe Iota would be able to use Senjutsu. I'm just saying. They would be able to combat the, um... Well, besides B, obviously. B is the only Jinchuriki who can't use... Well, it's one of the... It's the only Jinchuriki there, besides Gara, that can't use Senjutsu. But that's not the point. They continue with their battles. And Naruto, they began to push the Tentails, Obito, back. Until they are eventually able to, um, with the help of B, um, and the other Chichurikis along with Gara, Well, the other, um, the Konoha 12 or the Ruki, yeah, the Ru Konoha 12, are able to rip the Bijus from Obito. Causing Obito to literally succumb, as not um not succumb to his weak. Um, he began not to succumb to death or anything. Uh, he began to um with the due to the rapid losing of power, he'd be very fatigued. But during that time of them tugging, doing a tug of war, Naruto Toshinori had been able to convince Obito to come to their side to help. So. Madara seeing this decided that he would use the Rene Rebirth technique on Obito. To bring him back to life. Now Naruto, um, could, uh, who had learned of the technique and knew that that's what Obito was doing, because um, not not because Obito told him, but because Obito began to perform a technique and Madara began to glow the same glow that was going around with Jiraiya, due to um due to pain. I think it was either pain killing him or Obito killing pain. Oh, Obito killing Jiraiya. Naruto would immediately rush Madara, causing Madara to um there was uh well would immediately rush Obito actually because Obito is doing casting the technique and Jetsu's on him, so he would immediately rush Obito, hitting him dead in the um not jaw but in the um torso, sending him back, disrupting the technique. Madara angered as Naruto tells Hashirama he needs to. Control Madara and seal away his chakra if any if anyone can he tells his dad He's a seal master to work with Jiraiya and Hashirama and then and seal Madara away now They don't need this to go any further The Ten Tails is finally defeated and they don't need another threat like Madara coming back to life 
Zetsu's angered because his kid is now getting in the way. As eventually he would be able to write Obito's body as he taking control over it for Mata to perform the Rene rebirth. As Sasuke appears next to Naruto, Naruto would look at him before saying after this war, I'm going to bring you in, Sasuke. Before lightning will begin to cackle around Naruto. As D5, as well, A, the Raikage, I'm going to have some speed blitzing characters here. So A, Naruto, I say B, Sasuke, and Guy and Lee would all be there, um, would be there ready as they rush the um, Obito. Naruto lands first, then a, uh, I say maybe Guy, then A, then Lee, then Sasuke, well, or maybe, no, then B, then Sasuke, landing devastating blows to Obito's body, being enough to, um, being enough to where Obito wouldn't, um, like, bones were broken, so even if Zetsu were to mend them together forcibly, it wouldn't work properly. Zetsu would damn them as Obito tells Naruto to destroy his Rinnegan, and Naruto Toshinori doesn't take a chance. He just knows that a chance is all anyone needs to for the tide of battle to change and grabs Obito's Sharingan and ripped it out of his eye. Um, Renegade before crushing it. Zetsu Anger decides to take over Obito's entire body, but Naruto is actually able to grab a hold of Zetsu's, um, as um, blackness of Zetsu, a black Zetsu before delivering a devastating palm strike, sending Obito back. But since he has a hold of Zetsu, he literally sent Obito out of Zetsu's control. Zetsu will try to control Naruto, but the Kyuubi's chakra was combating him as he sends Zetsu out. Naruto will tell Naruto will tell A to use the Konoha um the uh what is it? The uh, what was that thing that I just had that uh Rokage always uses um so that Naruto was too overpowered. I'd like an overpowered Naruto to be honest. I really do. It's like it's just like my thing. Like Naruto deserved something like that to be over an overpowered character in his own verse. He deserved that. He deserved that. Um so the Kohaku no Johei, I think um is what it's called. Is I think I pronounced that right, hopefully. That's what they'd use to seal away Zetsu. Even though actually no 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 no, they wouldn't be able to properly seal him away. Due to the fact is that Zetsu needs to say a phrase that he always says, and seeing as how Zetsu doesn't really say a lot, like that a specific phrase a lot, then yeah. So th when they realize it wouldn't work, they decide that they need to uh, put place distance within them. So Naruto, using his telepathic link with Karama, would link himself with his father, before telling his father to, um, to um, link his chakra with Karama and teleport to him immediately. Minato, who now applied the seal for um, Hashirama to seal Madara's power away temporarily, just enough for the people to seal him away, had now um, flashed Naruto using Karama's chakras as a link. As he appeared next to him, Naruto told him he needs to seal that away now. It's a member of the Akatsuki and they have no way of dealing with him. Zetsu was about to seep into the ground and surprised when Minato appeared right where he was. As he placed a hand on him, as these weird ceiling matrix would come from his hand, as Zetsu realized that he was sucked back up from the ground and is now spread out, creating well, what was in essence his body. Like the body that we see Zetsu have when, I believe he's in control of someone, but um, the body we see Zetsu have in that flashback when he was watching uh, Madara and Hashirama's battle. He's seen that. So, with Zetsu now defeated, Naruto would tell them that they need to seal Madara now. And Naruto knows exactly how to do this. As with the uh, Kohaku no Johei, um, he runs, he goes towards where Madara is before telling Madara does he want wish to dance now. Now Madara, who has some experience with this but doesn't know how exactly it works, let's say so. You wish to dance with me. As Naruto smirks, Madara wonders what he's smirking about until Madara is sucked into the Kohaku no Johei. Sealing Madara away because we do know that Madara does like to say, do you wish to dance or dance or something like with the variant of dancing with him. We see him say that a lot throughout the war. I believe I seen him. I heard him say that. Um, I believe it was with um, the Falkage against the uh, Shinobi Alliance original where he fought tomorrow and then 
And then later on, I'm not really sure, but I'm just going to use that as a plot point to seal this away. Now, with Madara now sealed away, they would seal the Kohaku you no know, Johei in a place where no one could grab it. As the night, well, with the, on onto the moon. Well, not onto the moon. They they need I need them to find a place, and what better place than the Cloud Village, place within the Raikage's a hidden entrance that only a the Raikage knows about. With the war now over, Sasuke, Naruto, Sasuke tries to leave with Team Taka, and Orochimaru dismisses the five Kaigas from the world. But before Sasuke could get away, Naruto, along with Tsunade, Jiraiya, um, Toby Rama, who actually can withstand being dismissed because, you know, he's the creator of the technique. And, every, um, and Sakura and them all appear before Sasuke, before telling him he's not going away, getting away just because he helped fight in the war. He has crimes to pay for. If Sasuke gets ready for battle, Toby Rama would flash to him as he, while traveling with the G.I., he had placed the marker on it and would knock Sasuke unconscious before Tsunade would look at Orochimaru. During her eyes, along with Jiraiya being there, Orochimaru knows they are number four, telling them to give up now. They have no chance of winning this, this entire thing. So with the war now concluded, Sasuke take out being defeated. We give I give Tsunade about two or three more years of being Hokage before she decides to hand it off to Naruto. And this is actually what this what if ends. I can finally have finished a what if. It's been so long. And I know this is not the best what if representation, but I will be I'm still getting I'm getting used back used into doing what ifs because normally I don't really go into the war. I don't, I, I'm probably not going to go into the war anymore if, because it can be avoided. It was really hard because it's a lot of information. I'm, it's a lot of information that my brain really can't help to remember a lot of. So that's why it's a bit, you know, janky, if you will. So I will see you guys later. What if entertainment out?